Welcome to Chew the Fat. I am your host, Smooth, and today we have a very special guest with us, fellow content creator, and so much more. You know, on the Chew the Fat Smooth show, we allow our guests to introduce themselves. So we'll allow it, and you can be as arrogant as you like, you can be as detailed as you like, you can be as mouse as you like, whatever you like. Just let the people know who you are, what it is that you do, and we'll get on with the show. Okay, my name is Ruth Marquise. I am your favorite realtor, um, is what I say. Um, I sell real estate in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. Um, and a couple years ago, I got into Ruth and Relationships. I had this show. And um, just on a relationship journey, trying to figure out what I need to heal from and grow from. And um, ever since then, I've been doing talking about these topics with you guys. Okay, so I, I, something that I'm going to have to revisit in just a second. Mm -hmm. You said you're on a relationship journey, so we're mm -hmm. definitely not going to let you off the hook with that. We'll see mm -hmm. what that means in a moment. But if people wanted to know about you, right, like, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Philly. Philadelphia, born and raised? Yep, born and raised. My I'm the first in my family to be born in America. So my family oh, okay. from Haiti. Okay. Um, mother and father. And um, they've been here for over 40 plus years. I'm, I'm 40 like, years? Mm-hmm. Past, oh, wow. past 40 years. I'm okay. Sure. So yeah. you're the first. You're Yankee. Yeah. Me too. I'm, I'm yeah. similar in that sense where I was the first one who's a official Yankee. My mm -hmm. parents were born in Guyana. And then now I was the first one I was born here. So, right. you know, I guess you could call that a big deal. But yeah, so I'm completely Americanized. I don't know anything right. else. Although I was in Guyana last week. Right. But I don't mm -hmm. know, who, right. I, you know, I don't know nearly as much as I would if I would have grown up there, but I'm pretty familiar with the culture. Right. right. It's still there to me. So how was growing up in Philadelphia? Because, you know, we hear rough. What part of Philly are you from? Man, I'm from like, I thought it was North Philly, but it was like there, right off of Germantown Avenue. Avenue so it's a nice town. For a couple of years, when I was seven, I moved to West Philly. So I really consider myself in my heart like a West Philly girl. Okay. Because um, those those are my stopping grounds, sixty uh, first and Cobb's Creek. Um, so and then from there, I moved to Elkins Park. Okay. Yeah. Now, was it um, rough? In West Philly. Yeah. We had or, a, the quietest little block. Even oh, okay. Um, people think it's rough. I mean, my cousin got mugged one time. That's it. That's it. Other just that, once. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have left it outside. <laughs> just one little mugging. It's okay. Like, okay. But it was just like all these little old white ladies that live on a block. It was very quiet. But it doesn't mean the school wasn't, you know, rough. But yeah, and that's pretty... that's what I want to get to because um, I know my schools were kind of rough because um, I grew up in Newark, right? And part of it, the elementary school, I mean, we had a fight club, like literally, um, but it wasn't crazy. Like you weren't like scared going there. But when I went to high school, I went to Westside High, it was handled like a jail. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're going in, you got your metal detectors and they're also frisking you. Right. They're open, they're going through your bags and, you know, it was, it was crazy. They would like start fires and just a whole bunch of nonsense. People, you would get robbed in the bathroom. Oh wow! Yeah, that was yeah, that was that was real. Like there was a whole thing. If somebody said, uh, "Let me get a quarter," you already know what time it is. Just either be able to run or fight because that's just what it was. Let me get a quarter was was the thing in my era. So if you already knew, once somebody's on that type of time, you already know what you got to get into. So right. yeah, it was it was rough. So that has an effect on you. I almost got sent to West Philly High. And that's when my dad decided, oh, no, we're moving the whole family to the suburbs. So I ended up going to Shellingham High instead. But I used to be the girl that had to fight like three times a year um, because it just you can't be can't be different. You can't dress different. You know, I wasn't allowed to wear pants for years and years until I was in middle school. Um, oh, you had so to wear like a skirt just because it was ladylike? Every day. OK. A long skirt. So in your culture, right, mm -hmm. um, or at least in your household, I don't know if it was mm -hmm. more so your culture or household, um, did they make you like you had to be feminine, like it was it was mandatory, like and no confusion in this house? It's kind of weird because in a way you had to like you have to serve the your dad or, you know, the family, like you serve them food, okay, a glass of water. But then when it comes to makeup and stuff, they wanted to strip all of that away. So they were religious on top of that. So you can't wear lipstick, makeup, nail polish was... So oh, these are the straight. things that make you feminine, but it's just like, you can't do that part. You got to be natural. I, I, I get it to an extent because um, 
like if you start going back to biblical days and and mm -hmm. stuff like that makeup it's just not a thing you can still be feminine mm -hmm. so femininity in my opinion is more of an attitude a um it's like your persona it's mm -hmm. it's your demeanor it's through your actions mm -hmm. but not necessarily through the way you try to look right so I, I can get that part of it um would you say that helped shape and mold who you are today or did you kind of rebel so against it I, I rebelled for a little bit i was trying to like i was switching my clothes and things like that but then oh you was one of those little girls that would go to school <laughs> and then switch yes. into yeah. like, the whole different Until, outfit like, i got called out by the teacher You're like your mama know you came to school like that I was, like what what were you maybe, doing just like provocatively a, a short skirt oh it was really short or something he said that and i was it was a black guy that would that um said it and i was like you know what if he's saying this i maybe i, I might have did a little too much this time oh and, yeah. <laughs> so I, I was like you know from now on i'm going back to myself you know you have those little moments of rebellion but um now it's just like i'm always in a dress all the time I, it's like you revert back to whatever you did when you were younger you know so, okay yeah you know, know what i could absolutely speak to that because when i was younger my parents and still some of the values, I don't think it was um, as strict in that manner, like mm -hmm. towards my sister or us. Like we kind of knew what we were supposed to do as far as like being masculine and feminine, mm -hmm. just by the example. But they wouldn't, mm -hmm. it was like zero tolerance. Like I couldn't ride my bike off the block or right. I did one time and I got, I got handled, right? Yeah. I, I remember that particular time. So um, it was something that I never did again. I understand it to an extent because like, they were still on bikes crazy mm. over there too. They're like the dudes would just jump in front of you, grab your handlebars, and then now they got to buy another bike or right. you just won't have a bike. So I can understand to that extent. But, um, and I did my thing. Like in my early 20s, I was doing all types of stuff that nothing that they taught me. Right. But like you said, when I got a little bit older, started growing into my manhood, now all the values and uh, examples that I was shown started to kick in. So mm. you're probably one of the first people who actually relate to me on that mm -hmm. and because i didn't have anybody explain it like that but i kind of knew it but i didn't mm -hmm. think that that was a similar experience for a lot of people where they just default back into right. what they learned but still rebelled for whatever reason right when when i was younger when, and we were in like north philly that the houses were like house house like so you walk five steps and you're at the neighbor's house i wasn't even allowed to go to the neighbor's house i'm like so you want me to like walk in a circle <laughs> like, <laughs> i kind of want to skip around a bit i want to know how that kind of molded you into your career like at what it is that you do now because i know one you do um your content creation right mm -hmm. and then two you're a realtor so that's one one and the same though, because I don't, is it? my topics are just basically real estate. Yeah, that's what brought me into content content creation. Um, well, how I wanted to become a realtor. Well, what happened was, um, I got married early, so nineteen. How early was that? 19? Nineteen. What made you do that? Because um, I had been with the person for a while, so like five years or better. Yes. Okay. So we were, we were together when I was 14 years old. Oh, it was exactly would, five years. I okay. Would, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. But yeah. So by the time, like when I was 14, I was like, I'm ready for a husband. Like, give me a husband. I don't, I don't know why, but that's what I was saying. And then by the time I got 18, I was like, you know what? I might want to live a little. Like, I just want to, you know, like get my own apartment. I wasn't allowed to do that. I wasn't allowed to go on to campus. That's what they say. They didn't know, no, not campus, you know, so... It was a big thing. I got into Drexel and then I had to... Wait, so you got married in college? Yeah. Oh, damn. I mean, I was in CC... I was in community college. Cause... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just thinking about yeah. it. Like, you're in, you're still in school. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? That's if my like... daughter did that, I would kill her. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's too early. But it was no options for me. It's like, I can't go uh, to the dorm. I can't, you know, I got to stay home. Cause they, mean, they say 18 mean nothing. They'd be saying one trying to charge you rent. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. It was like, that make that make sense. Like, why yeah, no, I pay yeah. rent now? I got married. <laughs> you, have no you, know, you have no authority, right. but you have responsibility. Exactly. So yeah, that, I was that, like, this is the weird. only option you got kind of given me. So I just took that. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll just, I'll get married, you know. And To kind of get away from them? Is that what I was you right said? to the third floor. So we didn't get away. Oh, wait. So your husband and yourself moved into your parents' house? Yes. He, so they just let him move in? Yeah. And I was we because and it's a three-story house, so we had like an apartment on top of the house. So yeah, we're the same age. 
No, he was 23. I figured he was a little bit older. Yeah, okay. My ex-husband. Did, did they have your um, blessing? Your parents? They shouldn't have gave me the blessing. They should have said we want to vet him first. But they, like, but they just were so happy because yeah. he said, like, okay, she's doing the right thing. And you know what? I can understand that because um, abroad in many different countries, that's mm -hmm. what it was. Like my parents were married very early, like 20, right? So mm -hmm. um, grandparents, you know, right. it was different. People who had more children, people were married younger. You were responsible younger. Um, but we were bred differently. So I can't say it was wrong for that time or even wrong for this time, depending on what circumstances you were facing. The way that society here is constructed, I would say it's different because we are coddled and babied. Mm -hmm. So we can't handle things like adults. But right. even in US, it's kind of weird because at 18, you can go ahead and fight for your country and possibly die. Mm -hmm. So it's like, to me, I'm like, so you can have that type of responsibility, but I can't drink a beer. So right. I can go ahead right. to a uh, another country and fulfill duties for you because you say it's cool no matter what happens. But when it comes to me, I don't have full reign, right? That's right. That to me is, is kind of weird. Right. But I will say that I think that other cultures sometimes you just you develop earlier. So maybe if he was Haitian and then was raised the same way as me, then, then it would have matched. Yeah, because then that expectation, because when it didn't work out, my mom was like, you didn't find her on the street. You found her in the house like she was very upset. Like, oh, yeah. How could yeah. this go wrong? I'm like, yeah. no, that's if y'all would have just said, you know, just something. I was waiting for something and they ain't say anything because I was like, my, my parents will never accept you, right? And they did. And so I, I was, that's why I'm so like adamant with my children. Like, um, this is a process and we got to get to know this, these people before you commit your whole life to them, especially when you're that age. You know? Absolutely. So I do want to get back to the career though. So you getting into realty, what sparked oh, the, that? The reason why I said that is because I'm, up, I'm on the third floor, had my first baby. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. How old here. were you when you had your first baby? 20. Okay, cool. We're okay. 20. We're good. So she, okay. She's about to be 20 um, in a couple months. So I, I tried to go with a realtor and I just didn't like the experience I was facing. So I became my own realtor. So that's how I got into real estate because it, it was like, oh, I need an elective. Oh, we need a house. Yeah. Well, it's my house. You know, and a lot of my businesses are like that. You know, it's my. I got into daycare because my I didn't have a you know I had two children and I wasn't gonna pay four hundred dollars or five hundred dollars a week, so I started my own daycare. So a lot of times uh, the things that I do it, it's because of a necessity that I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in school, what were your what was your major? In college or high school? Well, I, it's college. So I'm gonna go back and when I was in high school, I. I realized that hairstylists were getting paid for other people doing the work. I was like, ooh, I like that. Okay. So I couldn't wait to become 11th grader so I can go to the tech school. So that let me down a whole thing about business. I didn't know I was a business person. So then when I got into college, I was a business administration major, but I didn't know until I graduated, that's a secretary. Oh wow! <laughs> like there's a difference in the real life. Why are you over nothing? So I'm like, I, I went to school to be a secretary. That don't make any sense. Or a manager, whatever. So I tried to switch it up to business manager. But I knew in my heart, I want to own my own business. So I was like, I'm going because y'all tell me I gotta go. But I really shouldn't have probably went. But in going, I'm like, well, how can I make the best out of it? So I did get my real estate license while I was in college. Um, and then I did go back and get my um, two year degree for child care. OK, so that's how I made the best of it. So there's a lot of people who are interested in real estate right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Would you um, suggest it? Because there's like an influx. Everybody, a lot of people just say they do real estate. They mm -hmm. might have like read a couple books and, do, right. and then there's people who are doing it for real. Right. Would you suggest real estate? If, like, let's say your daughter's like, I want to get into real estate. Would you say, OK, she's getting her license. She's getting her license. Both of them. OK. Is there any particular type of real estate business? Because there's so many different right. fields sure. you can go. Residential, uh, you can start with residential until you build up the like different areas that you want to go to. You can be a commercial realtor, um, a real estate agent, sorry. Um, and you know, it depends on what kind of, like even everything ha has a niche. So you can use, uh, you can 
go after first time home buyers. You can go after the elderly. You can go after when you say that, go after. No, okay, go after. marketing <laughs> words. Yeah, right. So yeah, like the elder. Not yeah, go go going that going after um, the old people. Sound yeah. kind of <laughs> they got the like money predatorial. <laughs> they got all the property. They got the money, and they are going to the, the old folks' home and giving it to their kids. So it's the whole thing. So yeah, you can pick whatever niche you want. Gotcha. And, you know, specialize it. So if somebody's like, hey, I see a house, I want to flip it and do that. Um, is it as easy as just saying, look, I want to buy that house, flip mm -hmm. that house, or is, is there a lot of red tape? How easy is that or how difficult is if that? If you have money, it's not hard, right? I don't like to say things, are, anything is hard or, or difficult. Um, if you have the money to do it, this is the knowledge. So I tell people, stop going to your realtor without having any kind of investor education. You need to go educate yourself first so you know what you're looking at. You can't depend on your realtor to run your numbers and your comps and all these things that you might need to determine whether a deal is lucrative for you. Okay. So if you have no education, I look at realtors as order takers. They're not supposed to be determining what your deal is or if you have any off-market deals, no, I'm gonna keep it for myself. I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what people do. And they're like, I can't wait till some dumb realtor give me a deal. And it's like, mm. Good luck with that. Not gonna happen. Right. Yeah. So, is it is it difficult if you don't have money? Because I, you'll see a lot of people on like you know um, YouTube or Instagram, and they'll say, "Why would you be using your own money? Why not use somebody else's money?" Doing? When you go to those conferences, they always ask you, and I've been to a ton of them. If you have an uncle with some money at the end, I'm like, you may you mean to tell me I did all of these three days, <laughs> I did all of this stuff for you to tell me, hey. Um, They'll try to run your credit, see if you can get a credit card, or they'll ask you, do you have a rich uncle? So basically you need a family member that has money. So if you don't have the money, other people's money means somebody in your family. So they're doing really? all of this so they can weed out who who has these connections. Wow. So it's not, it's, it's very difficult to uh, start a business and be able to get a business loan for in realty. General? For realty, yeah. Oh, like, let's say you wanted broker. to buy houses and stuff, yeah. Oh, no, like, it's those two different things. Like, if you want to be a real estate agent, you're selling somebody else's home. Got it. If you are you want to be an investor, that's, that's on you. So you just, you go in, you have your money, have enough money to fix it, and then you give it back to the realtor to sell it on the market. It's that simple. Um, do you, but here here's how you actually make the money when you don't have a lot of money. You go into hard money loans, and these that's, that's where you have to know what you're doing. You have to be educated in order to find the money that you don't have. Got it. Perfect. So the one thing I did want to know is that connects to the content creation. Now, did you become a content creator because you figured it would be something as part of the business that you need? Because I, I know there's like any bank, every uh, fast food place, they all have social media. Um, if, did you see it as a way to have an outlet for exposure or? Yes. That was that was me. I never got on social media like, oh, I just want to get on Facebook and take a selfie. No, I didn't take selfies until I wanted to sell real estate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if it don't make me money, I'm not doing it, right? So I was like, well, you know, you have to build relationships and people have to know who you are. So why not start there? So my my real estate business is not like, oh, well, I knew a whole lot of people. I got started it. on Facebook with zero connections. And all of my Facebook friends became my clients. Not all of them. Oh, you know, okay. But that's how you, you were able to yeah. source right. a lot of clients yeah, and Facebook. money right. from social media. So, right. you know, I always stress to people, I say the most important thing almost in every craft, like people, almost anything that you do, right? Um, the most important thing that you have to be good at, particularly if you're in um, something that deals with other people, is your connections. It's, mm -hmm. We can't stress that enough. You have to be connected. You have to be networked, right? You don't have to know the most rich people or the most powerful people, but you need to be around other like-minded individuals who sometimes can help you source something and vice versa. It might be something you can't use, but you know what? I don't even do that type of real estate, but look, right. I got a homie over here. Right. This dude will get you right. Or I got three, think, three deals I'm working on right now. Like I'm going to push this right. off to the homie or, you know, or, oh, wait. She familiar with uh, Texas. I'm not dealing with Texas right now. I'm not even licensed out there, but I got a home in Texas for you. Boom. Right. So the more people you know and the better you treat people, <laughs> oh, yeah. the better off I think you could be. And that definitely correlates to all businesses, right? No matter what, it's, I think treating people well is going to be great and being networked is going to be great. So when I, I agree with you, when I started, um, 
somebody gave me a list. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. Like, cause I'm in my world, it wasn't normal to be on social media. There, I know a couple of realtors that did it, but there was no real st strategy behind it. We didn't know that there was money. So real estate really wasn't done that way. So then I got into, when lives came out, that's when I started doing Facebook lives a lot. Got and, it. you know, start building relationships during the lives and things like that. So what I would say is you don't have to have a lot of money to get started. You just have to find something that you want to do that you're passionate about. And then you go from there. You sell your first home. I used to say like, oh, I just made a video and made $10,000. Why? Because the, the person that was watching the live, they bought a house from me. And then they had a sister that wanted to buy a house. So that was $10,000. You see what I'm saying? Wow. Okay. So it was when I started seeing that it was lucrative like that. I'm not saying every video now. Come on. Yeah. But you never know who's who's <laughs> Exactly. Who because, exactly. And I wasn't doing anything. I was just doing motivational videos. I was walking through the city. You see me. If you saw a girl walking with a stick, it was me. Like I was doing those before everybody was like really out there, like taking pictures and public. Yeah, yeah. I was doing that awkward stuff. But you have to get out your comfort zone. So I didn't start with a lot of money at all. I, and I didn't start with a lot of contacts. I knew everybody in my family was not going to buy a house for me. And people get on social media and be like, no, friends and family don't want to support you. It's not about that. Like, they think that you don't know what you're doing because you're new. So <laughs> why you would they? You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't buy from you. You know what I mean? And I just did a, I think I did a, my first video in 2017. And I was like, I called myself an expert. And I was still new. I was like, I'm a real estate expert. But you know, people started calling me from YouTube videos, you know, like, oh, I saw you. And that was on YouTube. I sold a house from YouTube one time, you know, and like, so I'm like, oh, this social media thing really does work when you really, you know, put everything into it. But I never took it as seriously because I was like, well, I'm local. Why would I make a video for people that can't use me everywhere? But that's the biggest mistake I made. I should have been doing it from 2017. Yeah. And when I was when I got my real estate license, I stopped for a long time. I didn't. My daughter's 20, and I only been doing real estate for 10 years. So. Oh wow, you had a major hiatus. <laughs> yes. How was you getting to the money then? Um, I I, I was in uh, I started my own daycare. Oh okay. Oh yeah, because you did get that license. So yeah. 2000 was it like. 2009, I jumped in. I'm like, yes, I'm ready. A friend of mine said she wanted to buy a house. I'm like, I'm getting that commission, right? So, no. <laughs> so, um, so what happened was um, I got in and it was dead. Like, it was like right now, like how everything is going bad. Yeah, it's bad. And the economy. Like, oh, man. You know what? Yeah. I'm leaving. I'm like, I, I sat around and I was like, you know what? I got to jump out. <laughs> I'm too scared to call people. To, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how nobody to lead me. You know, and I just got out and I was like, I'm going to go start a daycare because it's going to force me to get out there. It's going to be sink or swim. And I knew it, it gave me the chops that I needed for business. So when I came back to daycare, uh, to real estate, I was looking at these. I was like, you call this business ownership? What? This is nothing. You know what I mean? Wake up at six and, you know, be at the, uh, at the daycare think, at 630. And then you, you'll tell me about business. I think that's a good mentality to have. Um, it sounds like you're really big on jumping out of your comfort zone yeah. and a lot of people are afraid to do that um listen sometimes in life you have to take risk of course calculated risk right and what you were doing wasn't necessarily costing you money mm -hmm. so those those to me are like low risk but you still have to take some type of risk just get out there and you got to push it you have to be on 10 right you have to be aggressive right. about what it is that you're passionate about there is no playing around with that you have to pursue it because nobody's gonna give it to you right that's it's as simple as that so you also did daycare is that challenging like dealing with children and stuff um it depends if you have help you know okay. I, I find it fun one minute i'm like i can't believe they're paying me to dance around with kids and the next minute it's, it's stressful everybody's crying everybody need a diaper change so if you can deal with the stress um uh day, daycare is a great a great business uh, i believe but you know so um when i got into it i i went on faith because i was not making any money at home and oh, i was okay. Okay. living off of student refund checks Ooh. two times a year <laughs> <laughs> that's why i ain't married no more because i was like really you ain't gonna help me but um so when i did that i was like all right this is what i'm gonna do i saw obama become president i felt inspired and all of this stuff so i was like what if i took my um in income tax check and my refund check and I took five thousand dollars and I started this daycare so I got in and I had like a thousand dollars after I gave them the, the down payment and then what happened was um that was it I just I never made fifteen hundred dollars before in my life in a month at that time I'm 25 you know in Philly ugh, yeah 
at that time, ten thousand an hour was like that's what you was getting. You're not getting no more than that. Um, and so what happened was like I'm like, how do I think I can pay fifteen hundred dollars in rent every month when I never made it? So I had to jump out on huge faith. I'm like, well, me and guy are about to get to know each other very well, <laughs> and we did, and he made sure I got my first three kids and. I've been paying the rent ever like I've been in business ever since. So I'm like, it's a way you have to like really believe in yourself and put yourself out there, you know. And it, it lasted for about three years. I had a baby and I had to close it. We got a little sauce today. I'm 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 very happy that you could um guide some people mm-hmm. as far as that's concerned because entrepreneurship it's a scary thing, right? Even what we're doing now, like it it, it takes an investment. It's tough, right? And you don't know what's gonna happen with it. Right. The uncertainties are just you know <laughs> they grab at you right so that's why i never really uh try to quit the day job just because mm-hmm. it's like they pay the bills right. and i had a family and it's like it's no joke it's no way for me to be able to stop that right now so i said i'm just gonna have to do both because i'm not taking a leap of faith because it's not just me if i was a single dude listen i'm cool it is what it is but once you have a family you got people counting on you it certainly makes a difference it's, it's tough to do that and when I I only did the daycare because I didn't have the financial responsibility of paying the bills. So I'm like, well, I'm not doing like I'm a stay at home mom. So why not just and a college student? I forget I do stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> and then so I was just like, why don't I just it's not going to cost us anything. I'm gonna make sure that we don't have to pay it. But I'm just going to work my butt off and sweat equity. And this I talked to multiple daycare owners before I started. And she's like, you just got to get it from the muscle. One person told me and she's like, you just got to, you know, get in there and just make it happen. Because I was like, I need six months. I was like that before. And I was like, that's never going to happen. So let me just jump in there and, and make it happen. But it got to a point where everybody was so happy. I was doing like on Valentine's Day, you can bring your kid and um, go out on a date. They was like, oh, we bring all of our kids here next year. But when you don't have a supportive uh, partner, you know, that per- the person that wants it to shut down, it's like, uh... that's why I was like, I can't, I can't fight you, it, all that at the same yeah. time. I got a new baby. I'm getting sick. You know, so it was just, it was a lot. Wow. Okay. I kind of want to get into that. We're going to take a little bit of a shift here, mm-hmm. right? We, we, we're we good with the sauce. I hope y'all got enough for now, because mm-hmm. now we're about to get to another level here. It's going to turn up a bit. We don't know how this is going <laughs> to, we don't know how this is going to turn out. You know, you know how it goes, relationship topics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's tough. So at that, like, let's... I'm going to not try to push it too much on your particular situation, mm-hmm. but we'll see like kind of some of the things you did learn. Right. Mm-hmm. So with relationships, how much do you think you learned from that particular experience? What did you learn about relationships? You need to vet people. Right. Um, way better. Vet people way better because you, I didn't know who I was with until, cause I was a 17 year relationship. So I didn't know who I was with until after you know, it was. Wait, y'all were together for 17 years? Yes. So you stayed married for quite a bit then? Yeah, 12 years. Wow. Okay. I, you don't want to know how I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching 12 years of slave and I said, do I want 12 more years? <laughs> it's so dramatic. I was, really? It took a long time to like get away from a bad situation though. Okay. Yeah. Your finances are tied together. You yeah. have a child and then you're yeah. considering. I had you know, two children at the time. Ooh. Three girls. Three girls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The placement of your children and everything. That's that's a lot to deal with. Mm-hmm. And do you feel like that keeps relationships together longer than it should sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like, oh, it's not working. Let's have another baby. And I was like, that was not right. But. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I, I did it because I had like a couple miscarriages. So I, I really wanted another baby. So. Okay. You still want one. Yeah, I'm about to get right married. Now. So I'm about to have another one. Oh wait, you about to get married again? Mm-hmm. You about to take the plunge again? Yeah. Okay. And did you vet this time? Very well. So. Very well. <laughs> how long? How long was that relationship? Two years. Two years. Mm-hmm. The last time you took five, right? Before but it was you got like, uh, why not? Well, what could go wrong? Okay. Right. But now it's like, and I and I realized um, looking back that I was running away from a situation. So I'm not running away from anything. Okay. Yes. Damn. And I talk to a lot of my female friends about this a lot, right? You don't want to make decisions based on emotion, mm-hmm. especially when you're in despair. Mm-hmm. That's dangerous. And it sounds like that might've been a situation. You're like, mm-hmm. I got to get out of here. 
I need to go here. Mm -hmm. I need to do this. And many females make decisions mm -hmm. under stress or you're in spare. It's just the worst thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. Don't ever try to have a man move you out of a situation or into a situation because you are you are desperate right now mm -hmm. because you desperately want to leave or you mm -hmm. desperately want your own space because right. it still ain't your own space. Now, instead of you being under your parents, you're under a man, right? And I have to learn the hard way. Yeah. When you go into his situation, you going into a situation with somebody sometimes is different, but still, like if you're doing it to get away or try to gain freedom mm -hmm. or relocate, I think it's a bad idea right. because you don't take the time to look into that man to vet like you said right so let me ask you this mm -hmm. what do you do differently now to vet or what would you suggest to young ladies when they're trying to go through the vetting process i would go by a man's past okay um was he a cheater in the past um did he ever get engaged before okay. that, that's how you know he is serious about getting married you know what i mean how was that relationship how did that turn out um so that tells me a lot when a man tells me about his past and what he's been through. And like, if you did change, what what would make you change? Like some life thing had to happen for you to change. Otherwise, you're just, it's lip service. So you don't believe in somebody just growing up? Um, I think men maturing. can do it. I do, I do believe men can do it. Um, but you have to give me evidence and proof and fruit. Yeah. You gotta inspect the fruit. I know you're saying, tell me about your past and everything. Mm -hmm. What if he lies? What if he's a good liar and you just don't know? Um, eventually the lies will come out. Nothing that is done in the dark will not come into the light. So you're going to find out one way or another. And that's why you give it a little bit of time. You don't rush into it. Too so what kind of red flags would you be looking for? Red flags? Um, a liar, um, a manipulator, somebody that's always trying to tell me like so much great stuff about themselves. And then, you know, then they fall flat, you know? Okay. Um, some people are just they t t talk a lot of sm smoke coming out of their mouth. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> they blowing smoke. I literally had to, like when I was in a relationship one time, I had to like read a book on like lie detection. I was like, if I wait, you read a book on lie detection? Yes, that's how bad of a, a liar. He, like he was a really good liar. I Give me oh, so that's yeah. what I was getting to because really some some liar. guys <laughs> yeah. can lie pretty well. So how could you distinguish a good liar from his truths and his not truths? Um, well, you know when you get involved in a relationship. There you in y'all state well, especially when you stay together, you will see that that person's living two different lives. Yeah. You say that you do this and you say you're doing this in, in public and in, in private, you acting totally different. You cannot hide. It's just the fact. We we women, we know what they do. It's just that we wanna overlook so much. Yes. So we okay. do it to ourselves in a way because we overlooking this and we overlooking that. And you said you did this. You may drive Uber, but then you don't want to work. Like, what happened? I thought you was making a lot of money. Next thing you know, you're not, you know, Got it. on the couch. Like, it's always going to correlate. So if a man is consistent, kind, um, thoughtful, you know, generous, it doesn't take like, I don't do the bare minimum. He just doing that bare minimum. It'd be those guys that's consistent with the bare minimum that, you know, might have a chance to grow into the man that you want them to be. So. Okay. Yeah. So if you had to go and read a book on tactics, there must have been something that would have led you to believe that he was straight like a liar, liar, right? Yeah. He was already cheating on his girlfriend. So. <laughs> oh, wait. He was already cheating on his girlfriend? No, he was. He, yeah. I, Not he, with you, though. No. Okay. But in his past, he <laughs> had and he admitted that to you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that that now if somebody said yeah. they cheat on their girl, that's a red flag or automatically. It's like, well, or you have a, like it's it's people that still like to this day like oh if she if we ever not together me and you going to get together and I'm just like oh damn that tells me a lot about you sir you know what I mean yeah because those kind of people if you're like in a legit relationship you're not supposed to right like be looking there ain't yeah. no potential it's it's right. forever or nothing right? right so I can understand you never in a relationship you're never really supposed to look past that person if a person ever looks past you then they obviously can't see themselves with you forever right that's yeah. a that's right. an issue. Yeah. So I, I think that would be bad. What other red flags would you look for? Um, let me see. Like, why 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 did the people in the past did do what they did, right? So like one guy, every child he ever had, the girl had an 
I don't know how to say the A-bo. word. Yeah, it's an A bo. Yeah, right. okay. What was going on with that? I had to find out the hard way. That's all. Oh, this is why they don't, you know, have your baby because you're an idiot, right? Wow. Or you're okay. not financially responsible or something like that. So I had extreme cases. So it's, it's it, that's why the red flags come. Like I'll just go by because I said this on the video before. Your your perfect guy is for you um, is the guy like everybody that hurt you in a certain kind of way, like. Basically, you take that, those are the red flags. And all the things you love about your exes, that's probably your perfect guy. You put it all together. And I feel like life teaches you what is good for you. So a red flag for me may not be the same thing for another woman. You know what I mean? So I mean, yeah. there's some general ones. I'm, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Lying lines, lines and yeah, some universal yeah. right. things I mean, and to stay about, away from. Oh, um, for me, I'm a Christian. So if he says, oh, that's a black, that's a white man's religion, that was a red flag for me. You know what I mean? Okay. And that might not be a red flag for another woman. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So if someone was not of your religion, right? You mm -hmm. that was like an no. automatic deal breaker. Oh man. You're, you you can't even talk to him. We're not going on a date We're because not you're not Christian. So I'm not following that. You're Muslim or Because or I Asian tried Muslim. to do that and the person was like, Oh, you wanna renounce renounce? Who even say renounce in twenty twenty four? I thought you was like, renounce? Is it that deep that I'm a Christian that I got to renounce? You can't renounce? Yeah, I was like, nah, that's not gonna work. So every time you give those exceptions to your hardcore deal breakers, you regret it. Yeah, I think religion certainly could um, get in the way. Like if you're two different ones, or one's just not. If one's not religious, one is probably not as bad. But if both of right. you are like really into religions and they don't match, right, that could be a problem. Right. How do you feel about um, political alignment? Do you feel like? I think it shouldn't matter. You can be a Democrat and a Republican in the same house. I should not separate you. It's yeah, you realize how much it does right now, though, right? It's like crazy. people, you can't have your friends. I've seen people get into crazy, vicious arguments. I've seen family get into crazy arguments because of um, you know that. And you know, I'll say myself, my me and my family, we're not all on the same page, but it never put any tension to the point where we. Right. Where we're thinking right. that we can't talk to each other or love each other the same just because you have a different political belief, right? You're, you have your political belief, but are you open-minded to what the other person's saying? Because if you're open-minded to that part, you're like, you know what? I mean, I, I could think about that. It doesn't mean I'm change, yeah. but it. it is like I get, I get why you are the way you are. You, you're opening up your mind to understand the other person and their view, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to adopt their view. Yeah, and and a lot of times you have to understand. It's not so hard because a lot of people are fluid, right? You have a bunch of people who are independent mm -hmm. and sometimes things change because my political views have changed, mm -hmm. right? Who I normally would have voted for mm -hmm. five years ago is the opposite of what I would have now. Mm -hmm. And that's because both sides kind of became radical in my opinion. Right. And, you know, it's, it's nobody who's really in the middle. Ideally, I wish somebody would uh, just be down in the middle where it's like, okay, this makes sense. That makes sense. Right. And I feel like most humans actually believe and most of the things, but then there's just certain issues that are so crazy that'll right. that'll separate you where you like, damn, like, okay, like And they say and it's like a hot button, like when you say a hot button topic, like you're really pushing my buttons to make me vote this way and that way. Why are you talking about this such a controversial thing? It's just so manipulative. I think honestly it's here, like I think in my opinion, they in the back room shaking hands and laughing and getting drinks together <laughs> and then having us fight so we forget all about they are not on our side. It's a valid theory. I, I've think. definitely heard some people express that idea before. So and why I got to buy my house far, for it's you? It's not far you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's not far fetched. I heard the fighting, the bickering, and everything is for the people at the bottom, right? If we, there's a lot of content creators. I've heard people on the streets and people I know say, "This is really a game. We're just like pieces on a board." Yeah. And the people pulling the strings or moving the they pieces. Nobody know who's going to be the president. So why would I waste my time to keep talking about this um, every single time? I fight the fight. I'll do my my part just in case it is real. Right. right. I'll, I'll go through the motions and hold my nose and pull the the latch for whoever I hate the less. Right. Right. The least. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's all we can really do right about yeah. now. Be screwed either way. Put it that way. That's why I tell people we're screwed either way. So. I would wonder why right now. So that is that just like woven into you, like the whole marriage thing? Do you feel like you what makes you feel like you want to get married? Is it just because you found a person who made you want to get married or, or you just feel like you're like a married type person? Yeah, I, even if I if my first marriage didn't work out, um, 
I still enjoyed a lot of aspects of being married, um, of somebody else handling this and I'm handling that. And we just like better together. Like it's just like okay. a team, you know what okay. I mean? So it's not to say that the person was a bad person. It just wasn't my person. So, but the business part got done, you know, I did my part. He did his part. It got done. Could this part be done better? And that part be done better on each of our sides? Absolutely. Of course. But I really like having that person next to you and, you know, like when you're going through it, I think women are built to have somebody uh, help us to keep our emotions like and not even in check, but just like to lift up our emotions because naturally we'll go to the negative. Right. And then if you have a man that loves you and cares about you, you know, I just I didn't really realize last night. I was like, I really needed to smile. You know, like it was it was really okay. nice to talk to him on the phone and it just kind of calmed me down about whatever I'm going through. So a lot of what you're saying sounds like companionship, mm -hmm. right? Um, are you open to what that looks like outside of marriage, right? Do you think that marriage is necessary for that type of companionship? Um, I think yes, because I it comes with, it's a contract. So I'm not gonna buy a house without a contract. Why would I get married without a contract? I'm gonna do my part, you wanna do your part. And we, we have things together and it, it, it it's complicated, but we're, we become one. So if I'm becoming one with you, but you got five other girls on the side, we, you don't got to do nothing. Men respect marriage more than women a little bit because when they marry, they there's certain things they won't do. But and I, maybe it's for men because maybe y'all need to, y'all need that hard, this is what I'm in. But a lot of men, if they're not in that, they're gonna do whatever they wanna do. I might sign up for that. So you think that marriage protects um, men more than women in that aspect? Only because men need consequences. Men need consequences. That's how they learn. That's how they move. Really? Okay. So you don't, you couldn't possibly see or I guess entertain the idea, maybe not for yourself, but for someone else. Let's just say they're like, we'll do spiritual marriage, right? Whereas the original, the original contract, right? To me, to mm -hmm. me, I would think that a contract with the Lord outweighs Mm -hmm. a contract with the government mm -hmm. right so if you're saying all right no we're going to do a spiritual marriage i don't believe and get into the government mm -hmm. like the covenant is between mm -hmm. a man his wife and god mm -hmm. what would you say about that no thank you Albert. no thank you but <laughs> right if we're, if we're following the bible that's what you're really doing right same it, people it, with it, the it, spiritual it, one be having four wives so not necessarily listed oh so <laughs> all right so if the guy <laughs> so if they have one one right one wife mm -hmm. right it's a trustworthy man it's everything right. he's not... just not okay. no what do you mean when they were first getting married it, and i listen i know you read the bible i've seen you thump the bible I mean, sometimes you're technically right right just, yeah, yeah. And, like, and it never said I'm uncle sam had to be up in there well right well. so so at that point it seems like in your opinion that the government supersedes god no i i agree that with you that we didn't need the government before hate that they got involved i just me too it's almost like when you grow up with something you can't think of it any other way right it's just so you think you've been conditioned by society yeah, to believe for sure that i need your covenant with I the government writing. is stronger and there, there's, when i think about it there's nothing in writing like a wife is supposed to do this and the husband's supposed to do that it just said yeah. together i think it should be more like hey your honor she didn't x y and z and she never gave it to me this time you know like it, it should be more in a contract so people know what they're getting into that's the okay. only contract we have that we lose so much but we nobody there's no stipulations there's nothing in that contract so i mean i i dig that part of it but for men right it's kind of like a losing game right do you think that men benefit more from marriage or women benefit more? Or, 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 or who puts who has more to lose? Who's more at risk from getting married? I think in a paper marriage with the with the in the paper Sam. marriage, you could say men can lose more financially, I'll be honest. Um, but they gain longer lives. So you're welcome, guys. Okay. Uh, what is it like? Uh, <laughs> two or three years more? No, it's more than that. No, what's the numbers on that? Uh, you know, you know, I'm going to put the actual numbers on. Okay. Well, <laughs> a, whatever percentage points you got, a that. lot of these married women die early. I'm like, I don't know. This the only, this the only drug. Wait, you're saying married women die earlier yes, and my, or married they men do. live longer? Single women live longer, married women die earlier. They always worried about what's going on with their husband, if they okay, or I don't know what, what makes it, but that's just the, 
that's the stats when you look at it. You see. I saw, I saw that stat. I didn't want to believe it, but yeah, I forgot who did. If I'm gonna do a little more research on it just to to really mm. figure that out, but yeah, that's yeah. that is one thing. So financially, right? See, here's one thing that I that I think is crazy. I made a whole video about men should boycott marriage, not like as far as spiritual I mean. marriage, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just think that the way that the laws are currently constructed are not favorable to men, right? At all. The court system, the government, like everything, there's really no love for men. I, I, I think you would find it difficult to disagree with that as far as the juice being worth the squeeze. I think the, the, if you find a great woman, she's worth marrying. I cannot tell black men to boycott marriage when that's their one advantage in life that is a like you build wealth with a woman and y'all stay together you have to vet her better if you want to get a prenup get a prenup like i'm i'm not against those things but to say boycott it is so extreme to me when this is what they everybody has done to build up their family and create generational wealth so when they boycott marriage they're having kids everywhere they have all these scattered families. You think that that's how we're going to grow our wealth? Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I do. I do love that idea, and this is where I have my own conflicts with just within myself, right? Because mm -hmm. I do believe that the nuclear family was the backbone of America, right? That's and that's how you. Mm -hmm. One of the many ways you can build generational wealth. I think that two parent households are much more successful in every metric to, that separates you from a contributing human being to society to a degenerate right so i understand all of that and in an ideal world i think i would like for men and women to get married but the way society is constructed right now um the reason why i say boycott right and i don't want anybody to get it twisted when i say boycott i did like when rosa parks launched that boycott it wasn't for people to never ride the bus again it was for us to be able to equally ride the bus together. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would say boycott marriage because the way things are constructed right now, it's not even, it's not, the juice ain't worth the squeeze for men. And I do believe that there are things that need to be changed before we start to ride that bus again. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. You can disagree with me, I'll let do you, you go. Do you think the government really cares about you guys that they're gonna listen to you? That's the other thing. It's like, okay, let's shoot ourselves in the foot in order to make a point. But if the people don't care if you die, what is the point? You have to do what's good for you and your family. If you find somebody and they wanna live together, if you know that, like, you can't know, but you can try. And, yeah. and the men are just like, I'm gonna lose all my money, but uh, we're not making that much money. No. You know, well, and then it's like well, you're not well, really losing nothing. Well, guess what? I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you why divorce. that makes sense. Nothing. That was your fault. I'm the one that lost. That was your fault. And I'm gonna tell you why that makes sense. Listen, do you think that it's worse off for a man without money to lose whatever low he had, or a person who's rich to lose it? When Jeff Bezos took that divorce, he had all the money in the world. He still got all the money in the world and still was the richest after he that. Just prove to y'all that, that that's why you still get married because you can just bounce back. Yeah, from a multi billionaire. Everybody can bounce back. Come on. Worth of yeah, he, and, but he uh, made he made money. his wife that's he made his wife the richest is, person. Y'all putting money over love, that's not a good idea. All right, well, and even though the women are putting money over love, I get that part, I get that. But there are some women that are worth the juice and I'm, the squeeze. They I'm going to I'm gonna tell you why that why I have an issue with that because for one, it's not just your money; it's your pension, which is how you're going to retire, which will determine whether you're in a raggedy nursing home or probably somewhere on the shore or whatever it's going to depend it's going to be dependent on what type of diet so the food that you consume and whether you're going to die early or not it's going to be how safe your neighborhood is it's going to be what type of car you drive it's going to be what type of woman you can get later on in life there's going to be so many different factors that are determined just because you have money or not we all hustle every day the one thing that we do every single day or at least five days a week all of us is get up to go get work so we can't act like money isn't important or else we wouldn't get up every day at times we don't want to go work for somebody we don't even like because money ain't important we got to realize money ain't, is important and i wouldn't say you put it before family but then we'll get to family real quick you're also going to lose access to your children when we're talking about 90 percent of, of women are automatically defaulted into custody um maybe it's getting better now but it's still very very high and up until recently, unless that woman was on drugs or had some type of a major, major issue, you were not going to get custody over the woman like ever. So 
with those things lined up against you, it makes it something that is not very appealing to men. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say we have to kind of boycott is because either the women will pay attention or the government will pay attention, right? Because if men are just out here doing their thing, women are just out here doing their thing, I don't think they really want us like that. I don't think it's so beneficial for them to be able to um, get the money that they want. We'll, uh, I'm not an economist, but I don't think it's going to work out well. So I think that for their benefit, they do want us to get married or they wouldn't promote it, right? And they wouldn't say, hey, tax break if you're married, if they didn't want us to get married, if it's not beneficial to them for us to get married. And I will say this, certain states, red states, unfortunately, have been the ones to say we're going to do it, have made it to where, okay, um, there's no such thing as permanent alimony, right? Politicians are listening, but it's the red states, right? That's why, that's one reason why um, the blue is losing a lot of men. There's no permanent alimony in Florida because of uh, Ron DeSantis, right? Um, there was another state, I don't know, it might have been Kentucky. They said, all right, well, it's a mandatory DNA test. If you want to get child support, I think I think you would we would absolutely agree with that, too, because it should. It, if you're going to say child support, you don't want to pay for somebody else, because a lot of people, mm -hmm. there's some females out here that's just out here bugging. And um, there's there's other laws that are just more friendly mm -hmm. towards men and that are sort of leaning that way. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the little bit of fight that we're putting up. And some people are understanding that it's an important issue for us. And if we start bringing it to local politicians, medium, and all the way up to the presidential level, if that's what we say we want, or you won't get our vote because the other guy might say he's going to do that, then yeah, we can make we can make them care about us little old men sometimes. I didn't say, I'm not saying they'll never care, or I'm just saying like, you don't hurt yourself. So this is what I will say. With the boycotting, I understand that you want to boycott. Okay, boycott until you find love. You know this woman is it. You know, yeah. if she is like her character, her record, everything about her just screams like this is the woman that wants to stay married for life. Then why would you boycott that? That's what I'm saying. That's the only scenario I'm thinking like this doesn't make sense. I understand that it's costly for men. Get a prenup. Like it's almost like... Prenups, don't get confused with prenups now because prenups you have to renew like every few years. It varies from state to state. Um, then they always want to get a lawyer to bite through the prenup and say, oh, I was under distress when I when I signed this or I was intoxicated. So there's so many, the prenups are not like bulletproof. Well, nothing is bulletproof, neither is marriage. But I think the men should learn that you, you need to take the risk because the men that are taking the risk are going to get the reward. You're going to be the one to have your kids all in one place. Because what men don't see is when those kids grow up, are they all going to get along? Are they going to know each other? Are they going to know each other? So you're going to leave kids in this world and they don't get along or they, they're not a family unit. They never had that when they were younger. We talked about this earlier. When you do something when you're young and then when you're older, you revert back to that. You know, got you got five kids in five different households that don't know each other. So. They get, call on their own when you did. So I get that part, right? Now let's say, let's say this. Let's say we we uh, we take the kids part and say, well, if you if you're no longer with your the person you created children with, then you're gonna pay for child support. It is what it is, and I understand it, right? Proof is mine. It is what it is. Let's mm -hmm. go for it. Now we're talking about the marriage thing now, just just mm -hmm. as a standalone, minus the kids thing. Mm -hmm. Do you? Um, I'm still waiting for you to give me the benefit of. And, I, and I'm not saying that anybody um, shouldn't get married, shouldn't stay with one woman, shouldn't be faithful to her and plan on staying to with her for, forever. But it's like, all right, um, I don't want to give you access to my everything forever. Right. Mm, After that. We're, 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 OK, that's fair. OK, mm. so you so you uh, would agree. You, permanent, permanent alimony. OK, well, not even that. Let's say, do you think that a person should provide alimony? After they, are, if they're divorced, I tried to get out of this, but ain't nothing there, ma'am. I was like, all right. You said ain't nothing there? <laughs> nah, nah, well, what this kind ain't of nothing to get, ma'am. Um, sometimes the lawyers be on your side. So it's just like, far rare. If they look at the numbers and it's not making sense to them, they will mention that. Just like they could be on my side when you're looking at custody and the person don't want to give you nothing. There's men that don't want to give you any child support at all. They'll rather you like be dead somewhere in a ditch. You know, they don't care. Yeah. That's what we're fighting for. I know from your your side, it's like, oh, I work hard and I just, but you still had kids with this woman. And this woman still has to first make sure she has childcare, 
before she does anything. So we're good. we're still going to minus the kids out of the okay, situation. Well, we're just talking about alimony. alimony. Do you think a man, a man so should pay alimony? So y'all together and y'all no no alimony. Wait, so no kids in alimony or kids? No, nope. let's just minus the kids. Let's say okay. they didn't have kids. There ain't no kids. We're not talking about kids right now. If she was a stay at home wife, then you think you should pay for her for two years? That was two crazy. years, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, and let me ask you. To get on her feet. So you think that the man should pay a woman two years? To have alimony. Okay, what about the woman who said... about the I, because you got to remember, see, if, if we flipped the roles and you had to stay home and you couldn't get an education and you couldn't get in the workforce because what happens is with men, they we learned that by the time they're 45, they got their money together. Mm -hmm. But the women have to wait till 55 to get their money together because they had to stop and raise kids. We're not thinking about the women and their sacrifice. So if she has to give up all her options to be your wife and supportive and all of this other stuff. Like you have to be like, look, fair is fair. There's a lot of men that's like, now that it's over, I'm not giving nothing. I work hard. I'm the one. And she got to stay home. I was like, okay, that's fine. But that's y'all choice. That's how y'all decided it. Yeah. Now you're going to burn that bridge and not take care of a woman that she don't have the skill. Like we're really not built to be working this hard. Y'all forgetting that part. And when it's time of like back to the kids, and when it's time to like uh, pay child support, y'all be like, she got a job. She are, she'll make it. And I'm like, wait a minute. She, she don't have the body. She don't have muscles. She, you, you, now all of a sudden, when she was with you, she should have been a stay at home wife. But now that she's out there, she's like, oh, she'll feed the kid. It'll be all right. But what you don't realize, that's your kids on the bus. That's your kids in poverty. That's your kid. Like, so when my kids are at their other parents' house, I still care. But some men do not care if that, child is somewhere else back to the back to the uh, marriage thing back to the because yeah, i gonna let you go <laughs> back to alimony if you don't want to pay alimony i really don't like so what's thing your is, stance uh, from what i from what i'm grabbing right now you believe that men should pay alimony for two years after their um a year or two is fine like I don't, and I mean, that's it no this, five this year no 10 her. year no like no. okay that's not because the woman she she needs to get up and this life is life okay right? you have to get up pull yourself out and figure it out and that's it so right. one to two but years but see now we're not together you keep the house but you didn't you didn't make sure i get an apartment you didn't make sure i had a house that's the problem that's the issue where the man is not thinking about the woman after the fact and for real for real they should be making sure that she if you're gonna keep the house you secure that she has a, a house for herself because maybe the woman is not responsible i'm sorry but sometimes we're not so that's where it comes in, where it's like, can you make sure y'all both good, even in this divorce? Because you did promise that you was going to stay with somebody forever. And yeah. now it's not happening. All right. So believe it or not, I do believe that's sort of reasonable if you said two years alimony for mm -hmm. the man, right? From the man, mm -hmm. right? Two years, get you right, whatever. If now, there's no child support, right? Yeah, no child support. Right. We're talking about two years. Of, so you agree. That she can go back to school. She can do a lot of different things with that two years. Give her a little space. Okay. So now that I got it, I'm going to go with this one. So your stance is that a man should pay one to two years mm -hmm. of alimony, mm -hmm. which is not unreasonable. Mm -hmm. But I present you this question. Mm -hmm. What services do you think that the woman should still provide during those two years? And give her the house to sell if that's, if that's the case. No, 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 no. No services. I'm just saying, and sometimes... The no, 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 no. Did you hear the question I asked? No services. I said, I so wait, it. <laughs> you think she should... No services. She doesn't have to offer any services. So I got to... Even though we're no longer together, somebody else is now blowing your back out, whatever. You don't make my sandwiches no more. You don't give me any food at all anymore. You don't wash my clothes anymore. And I have to fend for myself when it comes to everything that you used to do. Now I got somebody to rub my feet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like all that. You're fine. But I'm all right. He was fine. But <laughs> I'm all right. right. But you, you off the hook, and you still get to live off of me for two years. I don't find that to be fair. Well, that's for you. Yeah, see, that's that's the disconnect. No, it's, that's the thing. It's like then, then that way, if because the because we're not going by who cheated on who. I think that sometimes it's not that. Sometimes they just can't really get along. But you have sometimes, okay, so we're going along in the relationship. Mm -hmm. You abandon me and you get another woman, right? Maybe it should be if you get somebody else, like if you if you leave your wife and you're with somebody else, then you pay alimony because that's fair. Because sometimes the woman is caught off guard 
she she is she was young when she first met you now she's not she's not gonna get another husband let's be real a lot of women are not getting another husband do not follow my example you may not bounce back ma'am a lot of women who um were able to get married the first time generally can get married a second and third time and the divorce rates increase dramatically after that but they're at least able to accomplish it because they got the method down uh i don't uh, i think you're giving them too much credit at this point uh, a lot of women don't get married I'm not saying that the statistics doesn't prove it. Like, yeah, because I was going to say, what is the stats of the first time you get married to the, to the second time? Like, what is that? No. Well, I know the divorce stats. They yeah, we know like that it doesn't work 70%. out. Seventy percent. Right. Yeah, right. So they don't know what they're doing. But but she's not that young anymore, and she has not has not been in the workforce. So now she has to switch up her whole. And and that's for stay at home moms. Like now, if she was working, I don't think they even give you alimony if she was working, right? It depends on um, you know, what the splits were. If she was making like thirty percent, then yeah, you're gonna probably have to make that up, right? But yeah, because I know what it's like. I mean, if you know what it's, what it's like to be a woman, and then next thing you know, you're getting everything taken away from you, and you didn't even ask for uh, it to end. You know, for, if you look at it from a woman's perspective, and the guy's complete jerk. He's the one that cheated and he's the one that is taking all the stuff back away that you used to have. Now you have to fend for yourself and no wiggle room. Now, I think you might be giving women a little more credit than they deserve because what happens is, well, you know how many, what's the percentage of women that leave, right? I know you study mm -hmm. that too. Mm -hmm. It's high. So we're mm -hmm. looking at close to, it's a, it's a between 70 and 80% of women actually leaving. For whatever reason that is, it is what it is. Well, let's talk but, about that part. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get into that. But a lot of it, we can't always blame the men, right? And say, because women actually, they change. And a lot of women, especially women who work too, they definitely are those kind that would um, find another guy first. They already got a monkey branch, mm -hmm. right? You know about that. And they will, they will leave you because of that. And then you'll still be stuck with the broken life. Mm -hmm. um lost yeah. everything we're being the model i'm the husband. man in this scenario okay okay I'm the man. you were the like, model you were the, the guy model. that that felt that whole life came apart after a divorce i was that was me so i know okay. it's like so i understand that part as well i think that's why i think that it should be stop taking the no fault out and just give somebody the fault and that way it'll be more fair but sometimes it's, it doesn't make sense for a woman to cheat and then to leave her man divorce him and then take his money. I agree with you. That's wrong. That's just unethical. And you got to deal with God. You know what I mean? Like God is going to have to repay you for all the stuff that you did to that man. So it's going to come back on her anyway. I don't believe in all that. Like I try to be fair. I try to be reasonable. I make my schedule around the other person. Like, so I don't, my mind doesn't go there. Like what these women that are just horrible are doing. I don't get that, but I know that the laws have to be for everybody. So it just have to be real customizing, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's tough. And that's that's why I say there's a lot of inequalities with that, which would deter men. And men are opting out just in relationships as, as a mm. whole, right? That I'm sure you've seen some mm. results from that too. It's opting out because it's, it's discouraging and demoralizing. Mm -hmm. When you look at what's going on, um, your average man is ignored or disrespected. Mm -hmm. Even when they get with the woman, they try to do the right thing. There's a lot of cases where women just don't treat their man like he is a man at all, right? Okay, like a king. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so, do you think there's a big issue with that? What would you say sure. that some women could improve? I tell on? them that girls treat their girlfriends better than they treat their man. Like, I don't know what is up with the arrogance of women these days. Um, just acting like, oh, he's a nobody. Oh, he's just there. You know, I like, where do y'all get this language from? Like, why do y'all treat these men so horribly? What did they do to you? I feel like when, because my son said something the other day when it was like, oh, girls can't do that. And I was like, that was the trigger that I needed. I was like, when I was a little kid, boys used to say that. So now I spent my whole life trying to prove what I can do versus what boys can do. Because boys always telling me I can't do that. I actually broke my ankle one time <laughs> because I tried to get on. I was on the top of the monkey bars yesterday. What you mean I can't do it? I tried to show up and I fell, broke my ankle <laughs> and got called all types of names because I was with a walker and a, um, oh, yeah, and I was seven. Like, you know, so well, I said that to say like, um, we are competing with men too much. All of our lives, we're just trying to show. That's why we're independent, this and then the third, because we're trying to compete. We're trying to show y'all, well, well, that's why I don't need you. I can do it by myself. Or the guy that you wanted treated you horribly. And you just, you know, like we're just dealing with a lot of trauma. And this is how we deal with it. 
And so it's just not really, I don't know why they have this attitude of, I gotta be better than the man, a man is under me. It's like, we are saying that, do you feel you like, say that you're do, sounding Do you feel like um, you do that? Like, do you actually say, hey, I need you to your current situation? Oh, do you yeah. say all the time? Yeah. Okay. A lot of women don't possess that type of humility. Because they don't understand what a man is good for. I had to, I did a show, it's one of my, be my best moments when I was thinking about what is a man good for? Right? Tell us what's a man good for, <laughs> real quick. Well, he is protection, right? Um, so if you're out, so if you stay in a house and the thump in the night happens, you know, somebody's there. I know it don't mean anything until some stuff pop off. And then you're like, dang, what am I gonna do? If somebody really come in here, I'm really a woman. If he opened that door, it's, I just got to put my hands up because I can't do nothing. Can't, I can't yeah. defend myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if y'all talking about the pop pop, y'all can't even shoot. But anyway. <laughs> um, some some of the ladies got it. Yeah, they going. probably good. But I don't want to like live my life because I'm yeah. also thinking about kids. And I know when it was when somebody had a gun around me, I was like constantly like, where's the gun? Where's the kid? And I'm stressed out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I um, so that's one. Just his presence alone makes it everything, you know, calm and more secure. Yeah. Um, and, and when you're alone, you're going to feel that. When you're alone in your bed, a, a presence of somebody, even in the Bible, it says it's like better when two people are together because when y'all in the hole together, y'all keep each other warm. You know what I mean? So through bad times, you have somebody that got your back. If you just have kids, your kids be against you sometimes. I hold you like, they're like, we're going to mess this house up. We're going to do whatever we want. And what you going to do about it, mom? Some, and sometimes it feels like that because you're running after everything and trying to keep it together. But when you have that man, you feel like you have a teammate. You feel like somebody else understands there's bills. I can't just chill with y'all all the time. I got all these things to do. You know, a man can help you emotionally regulate yourself. That's the reason why we don't appreciate men anymore is because the financial is not needed anymore. Yeah. But if we know that our emotions, like even me, I'm logical, but sometimes I get anxious and sometimes I get scared and sometimes I get fearful, but I have somebody to anchor me that is always the same. That makes a big deal. That that's a make, makes a big difference. Your hormones have a lot to do with this. And so um, this Dr. John Gray has a book and it's like Beyond Venus and Mars. And he talks about the hormones. And basically women are in their testosterone all day. And if they, men do that too, but they get a reward. They're like proud of themselves. But at the end of the day, when we working, we are crabby and irritated because that's not natural for us. Like we, we You're out of your natural state. Yeah, so we need more estrogen and that's, we have to depend on somebody else to get that estrogen. So when you don't know these things, you're just like, what is he here for? What does he do? Da, 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 da. But you can, once you know what he does, what he can do for you, now you say, hey babe, I need you to do this. I need you to talk to me. Let me talk and then um, don't interrupt me and don't give me no solutions, but just hear me out, right? And those things really help a woman. You know, he does that all the time. He lets me talk and he hears me out and it helps me calm down over the situation. Now, I'm not like this ah, at him, but it'll be about something else. You know what I mean? So, okay. and so these, there's a lot of things that men do that is really good for us. I'm, I'm trying to find that and uh, make it like a worksheet or something, but it was really good. No, yeah, can I, I can understand that. Um, I think one of the main issues, and you kind of touched on this, is that women just don't value men mm -hmm. anymore and it could be what you alluded to just now which is the financial aspect right mm -hmm. um we're not we're in a first world society mm -hmm. um so women don't really feel like they need men for protection or oh, i'll just call mm -hmm. 911 mm -hmm. or you know i don't have yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like they don't they're not really worried about it so the if you, anything that you don't value you're not going to treat well and I think that women were conditioned, not just because of the circumstances, because I understand the financial aspect of it, but I think so much more than um, finances and security. The, but the problem is those were our two primary mm -hmm. functions, protect and provide, and women don't feel like they need us for either of those at this Can point. Can I add one more? Logic, the logic. Problem solving is the, the other the one that I use. Problem solving yeah. is so key, because sometimes like I would pay attention to what and this is why the spouse you choose is so important. Like my dad would say something. Like I noticed that when I got my first car, my dad didn't approve, and I was—he was very mad that I got my first car. I what was, was seventeen. It? it was Mercury Sable, Ooh. and it just kept breaking down. Yeah. And then so the next car I got it from my dad, 
And I noticed, like, every time I get a car from my dad, they never break down, right? You really get your Toyota? <laughs> that was a Subaru that somebody owed wow. him some money. And I was like, it's a car. Why am I going, you know, back and forth? It's a car right here. I got somebody owed him money from a job that they couldn't pay him. So I was like, I'll buy the car from your dad. And every other car was from my dad. And then if I have an idea, like, oh, what, what happened to this office? He would give me some kind of guidance. And I feel like God uses our men to, like, show us the way and that's why you got to tap into that that's why it's a man god and woman right so he's leading me in that way spiritually and so i feel like when you have somebody like that says that dream job that you know you forgot about and you have that somebody always calling that into your life like that's a big plus hmm okay so what do you think that men or women could do to actually make them value men more because that, that problem solving is a thing but women don't really recognize that a lot of women will like not even they don't listen yeah they don't listen but that's <laughs> what you should do is start to listen and even if he's wrong let him be wrong until he's right you know what i mean like let him fail at leadership until he can get it right oh that didn't work last time but let me do it this time like men they're self correct i believe they self correct if they're not a foolish man yeah, yeah. foolish men i can't speak for them but i have a lot of experience <laughs> but wise men like that men are really like once you a lot of times when i'm doing real estate deals like i like when the man is involved and he gets to choose the house if the woman chooses the house it's going to take us forever he comes in he's like this meets all of our requirements let's get this house okay no no this is too early let's go look at more i just feel like it. and it's taken such a long process but that first house was a good deal and it was a great house now you're chasing that first house. But if you would have just listened to the man, I'm like, can you get your woman to check so we can finish this out? Yeah, and we that's in and listen, out, man. You just nailed women's thinking. They had that whole elevator story when they were talking about, you know, the the men on each floor. Yes. You heard, yeah, yes. Yes. that kind of explains women's we thinking want sometimes. More. We always yeah, you always think that there's right. going to be some some greater potential that doesn't exist. And then when and, you get to the top floor, you get nothing. Yes, exactly. You get to, that explains women and, and a lot of um, women's dating life, right? Or that's just, that's just what happened. They waited and they played around. It was like, oh, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. I'll just get something. I'll find a perfect dude. I'll find, a, I'll just wait. Cause my homegirl got the perfect dude, not knowing she getting slapped up at home right. or, or, or cheated on, or maybe he's boring or maybe, it could be a million things wrong with the dude, but you, that, I think that um, really messes us up, and especially if we're on social media. Social media has people just throwing up their highlight reels mm -hmm. of their lives and not understanding for a moment like, hey, this might not be them showing us everything. There's right. some things that are absolutely missing. Right. The fact that we went on vacation and now we can't pay our rent. Right. They're not going to post that right. part. They're not going to post the, the, the pink <laughs> past due bills coming in the mail. They're not going to post their empty cupboards or refrigerator. They're not going to post their children in the same clothes that they wore last week yeah. because they don't have the bread. Right. They're not going to post their check engine light on their vehicle because they went to Aruba instead of repairing their car and who would have said repair the car first the man the man would have been like no we're not going on vacation because x y and z we it's gotta do this yeah, yeah we gotta do this we gotta so do once this you start listening to them and you're like you know what we are in a better situation like give him credit when he's right give him credit you know praise him like encourage him to be masculine sometimes i, I, I was like with him i was just like you need to tell me no sometimes because <laughs> i was like Look. you have a tendency to say yes you need to tell me no and i'm like don't even if i'm trying to be persuasive like i still need you to say no when it's no and I no is like, a powerful word some people agree that it's the most powerful word in the english language mm -hmm. and you have to um and females appreciate when you say no if it's unreasonable you don't know them to death right. for every single thing but when it's something that you really don't agree with express it say no because um, I, I feel like you would agree that once you start to allow females to do everything that they mm -hmm. get bored with you and think you a pussy. Right. And um, in all honesty, once they start to feel like you are like weak, mm -hmm. they run all over you. Yes. It doesn't work. That's why I said I need that masculinity. I like that. Um, he's like an old soul. So I just, I just could pick it up really quickly. Um, so it's just, it's just, that's just it. I just enjoy masculine energy, you know, like I, just, I like it because it's like 
when my children and I, we wanted to leave an apartment and we wanted to go travel, we wanted to do all of these things. I'm like, yeah, you think we should leave? We had to leave anyway because of a personal situation. We should just go travel, da, 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 listen to them kids. We came back like, we were going to stay. You know, wait, what? Yeah. Said, this is why we need a man. <laughs> I'll never listen yeah. to y'all kids that's, again. That's exactly it. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah. I think that there's, and it's a balance, man. Women and men, that's the yin and yang. Mm-hmm. But it has to be a point where both people respect one another, right? You have to understand what it is that a woman brings and, and appreciate it. But, and vice versa. Stay right there. Because yeah. we said why a woman, I mean, why a man is good to have a man. We need to tell the men why it's good to have a woman because they don't believe that it's actually a good thing anymore, which is why I come online because I realized that, um, that, that the rational woman is not, she doesn't have a voice. Like we yes. are logical. We are You're- humble. We are. You know, you're, you're overshadowed by the um, the Thadarunis right. online, right? Posting up all of the um, the big booty pictures and everything mm-hmm. else. I don't think y'all shame them enough publicly. Some women are doing a great job at it, mm-hmm. but at, holistically, no. I think that women need to, unfortunately, and I hate to the aggression that's necessary, but I think it's a necessary evil. Well, like, I think they should be shunned. Money online, like me, go ahead, do that. <laughs> 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 I don't even want to say half the stuff I got to say. But it's the truth. Yeah, I, I got to say it, but I'm losing all these clients over yeah, it. You, know? you can't. You can't. You, you know, got to like, be careful. Yeah, we like women like that. I'm like, I know because I tell the truth. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, the one thing is when you tell the truth, you're going to lose a lot, but gain more. Absolutely. That's the beauty of it. I get, listen, I have people say some of the most vile things about me. Like they, they told me, whatever you can do, dragged, fulfilled, uh, mm-hmm. just completely nuked whatever you want to call it they did it online behind um an avatar of course no one ever talked to me like that in real life right i haven't been disrespected as an adult where somebody tried to punk me in real life or say something egregious like they would dare say online these are internet warriors and it's as simple as that so i'm like you would i know you would never say that to me in the real life you know why because nobody says that and that's why i don't do online dating yeah because that's not real either Online dating has messed the game up. I think that's part of what has ruined uh, dating today. And um, I can tell you a couple reasons why I've got some theories. I think that women have far too many options. And when bait, when given though that many decisions, they are looking at the wrong things. And I think the apps, the app designers have a lot to do with it. They get just understand that these people get psychologists mm-hmm. on their team. Mm. When a person, when when a marketing company gets a psychologist on their team, that's no good for consumers because that only means that they are there to manipulate you. Right. And especially when there's money involved, when men are paying for these apps, some women too, right? We're starting to see that because mm-hmm. women more so pay for the exclusive ones. Mm-hmm. Men pay for everyone's, right. <laughs> you know? So there's a lot of money involved and a lot of them have shareholders involved and all they're worried about is making more money. They're not in a business to just think about a business standpoint. If they're a business and they have shareholders, they're probably quite serious about their money. And what do you think is going to happen to their bottom line if they get everybody into relationships? Right. They lose. Absolutely. Yeah, I hear one of their um, models is is the app that's designed to get deleted. But right. pinch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's a lie because the same people be on there next time. You're gonna yeah, and you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail if they do. Came back, y'all still on here. They want to stay on. That's why I was like, wait, y'all didn't find nobody. What happened to this and that one? I think that some people find relationship. Um, some people may find uh, a connection on it. I'm not going to discount them, but they're such a minor- minority. I don't think it's like a, you should just, yeah, you could lose weight by getting surgery, but how about just go to the gym and have that sure yeah. thing? Cause then yeah. there's no other strings attached to it of like, oh yeah, you can die if you don't work out now. You know what I mean? So, um, how about you just do it the like natural? natural I had I had a strategy. You didn't ask me about the ruthless relationship thing. I had a strategy. Good. You had a strategy. Look, oh you can yeah, get, you can get into it. I was when I was looking and I was single or whatever, and I was ready to like be in a serious relationship. First of all, I had to renounce the guy. Like I would say to myself, like if it don't, that's on them. If they gonna they're gonna lose a wife out here, you know. And I was like, you know what, Ruth? They don't care. You know, like they don't really care if they lose like one wife, right? So I was just like, you know what? I'm not gonna say. Uh, there's a saying I would say like, 
I don't like if I if this don't work out, I never like I don't want a relationship. It was something like to that effect. I don't okay. remember exactly what it is, but I was like, I don't want a relationship. I, I'm fine on my own. I just die alone. I, I was saying that, and I was like, all right, I'll take that back, guy. Okay, I don't want to die alone. Um, and then <laughs> I was like dressed up, like always, like I'm going to do my makeup every day, natural makeup, you know, natural hair, uh, not natural hair, but like natural. Okay, yeah, not, natural nothing over hair. the top, no yeah. crazy colors. Right. Right, nothing wild. So right. pretty much as you are today. I was dressed up, yep, every day. I was going to the supermarket. I was going everywhere I was going. I'm going to the corner store, yep, and I'm dressed up. Never know, got my little shoes that kind of look like heels on. And I we sure shot. enough bumped into them uh, at the supermarket. At the supermarket. People be sleeping on the supermarket. Yep. What supermarket was this? Was it, like a, it was almost like a Whole Foods. I can't remember. Oh, okay. Oh, oh so they got like fresh, fresh food. Market. Fresh market. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And you, you know what's crazy? I have actually advised many women to go to supermarkets like Whole Foods or Fresh Fields or what, Wegmans, only because it's like when you go to a higher end supermarket, you got somebody who's, um, they probably got a little bit more money because it's right. not affordable. It's not right. Aldi, right? right? They ain't even shop right. Mm -hmm. This You have to, it's a little. They get into the money a little something, and even if they're not, they're taking care of their body, right? right. Most people who eat there eat relatively healthy in comparison to the people who are not. So I've been telling people that, and I, I am so glad you gave me that testimony today because that is actually one of the spaces where I say go ahead and do it because you're going to run to them. So who ran down on who? Well, there's a couple more things I did. I also lost weight. Um, I Lost wasn't weight. super heavy, but you know, we stay you, like, at a comfortable like a size eighteen. It was, like, it was like from a ten to a six or something. Okay. Yeah, like I was just slimming down and okay toning up or whatever. But you can like once I lose like ten pounds, my face my face, face gets thinner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, I did that, and I was in the, at the gym. I did a lot of like I went to therapy. Um, yeah, and and then I had to like. What made you feel like you needed therapy? Um, just because I've been through a lot of things in life, and I don't want to be bitter about whatever. You however, you don't want to project any of that you know, onto your. I want to give him a partner. blank slate. Okay. So what happened was, I I went, I gave somebody a blank slate. He was supposed to be the right guy, and all this stuff, six figure, and all this stuff like that, and all this stuff. He was an older guy, but he played he played with me. So I was just I was just really angry. So by the time I ran in, ran into him. I still wasn't like kind of over. I was mad at men. I was like, I did everything. I gave this is my first time giving somebody a blank slate. Like, you know, no baggage, right? No emotional baggage, I was yeah. saying. And he, he just didn't, you know, he wasn't the right one because I didn't know it was permanent F bombs. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know you could be 55 and still be it, you know? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then I was just, when I ran into him, I just didn't, I still kind of didn't want to be with anybody. Like, I was looking, but I was just not like, I was like, yeah, okay. Wow. I had, I was shutting down all the apps and I was just like, I can't be on apps because I don't get treated the same way on apps as I do in person. Got it. So they were very disrespectful on apps. How many kids you got? How many kids that? You know, they just was talking yeah, to me yeah, all yeah. crazy. I'm like, you know, I'm still a woman, right? Um, what age group was this? Um, a men? Oh, the, I put on apps like, a, it had to be 40s. Damn, people in their 40s behaving like this? Yes. Okay. Very childish, very annoying. Um, especially after Kevin Samuels. Uh. <laughs> Shout out to Kevin Samuels, but some of these guys really thought they was high value men after that. You just so. promoted them in their mind, Kev, you know? So I'm not against them or anything like that, but I I had I understand how some people ran what what he said yeah. or even misinterpreted what he said right. and, and went somewhere else with it. Understood. But very secure men were not gonna care like if you had children or uh, not to say that you're insecure, but when you, you get can. to a certain point, uh, uh, we go. We'll, hold on, let me just touch on that for a second. Mm -hmm. I think it's a personal choice, right? I don't. There are some men who do it. I used to honestly shame men mm -hmm. for wanting to be a single dad. I wouldn't do it now because I'm looking at like, damn, a lot of these young kids do need positive role models. Mm -hmm. Some people just love children. Some people like to take care of children. I can't fault them for wanting to be a part of a person's life positively, right? So I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. It still would never be a choice for me because mm -hmm. I am never doing that again, mm -hmm. no matter what. And I've already have taken measures to make sure that I will never do that again. So I will not, not to say the children are um, not great, but I already have mine and I'm cool. And after that, there is no no after that. So, so I wouldn't, um, I think it's a personal choice. It just depends on where you are in your life, right? I have to be young enough and I would have to really, 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 want that person and i feel like mm -hmm. the last thing i want to do is be a terrible father i would rather opt out 
mm-hmm. because I'm not in the mood to do that mm-hmm. anymore. I would never want to change diapers again in life. I would never want to go through that or, you know, the, the middle schools and all. Uh, you know, both my kids in high school, I'm at a good spot. They can put their self-sufficient mm-hmm. for the most part. I enjoy that. Right now, to, uh, to me, teenagers have been, I guess, the most enjoyable because you can have more complex Mm. Uh, conversations with them and stuff, I would not want to revert. And then when they're adults, I'm probably going to feel like that's the most enjoyable just because they do more and more for themselves. I still do give them the same amount of attention, but it's easier. It's not like I have to sit there and do everything right. for them. They can get up and make their own breakfast. You know what I mean? It's that's, just... That's nice if they do that. But you know, <laughs> mom, like, you make it, mom. Well, you yeah, make it no, so I did. Better. So what I say is this. It's a personal choice. For men who are willing to do that, I commend you. Rather than shame, you know, because like, hey, I understand it's a tough but responsibility. Married, well, it matter. Yeah, no, I don't have to worry about it. Mm. But I, and I don't want to behave like I don't have a dog in a fight because they're right. going to have children. Right. So that's why this is so important to me and just society. Right. And even local, if we talk about uh, the things that black people are going through and why we don't have a strong family unit, right. why we don't have legacies, why we don't even care to. So I have a dog in a fight in that sense where I want to contribute my part to society. Me, I don't have a dog in a fight, but I can at least relate to a lot of it. uh, Excuse me, not to cut you off, but maybe a man wants to contribute to society and would not mind having children, you know. Yes, and that's the thing. That's a good thing. And that's a good thing. I have been a stepmother. Okay. That was the, yeah, without me having kids. That's not me a stepmother and having kids. I had no kids and I was a stepmother. Wow. She don't talk to me to this day. But why? Just because you're you're no longer she, with. Yeah, she don't like me, but it's okay. Okay, you know? is that why you? Had, so wait, your total kids are, like you biologically are how many? Four. Four biologically. Okay, cool. I helped raise my. I mean, you know, I was a big sister to three, and then I raised one. So I, in my mind, I helped raise four kids, other kids. Till you have your, your own kids, you're like, I didn't raise them kids. They <laughs> gotcha, 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 gotcha. You know what I mean? But you were in addition to those, you had your you you were also a stepmom. Probably not at the mm-hmm. same time, but okay, dig it. Yeah, they, I had her first, so so I was like, but the kind of stepmom that was the mom, not the okay. kind of stepmom that had a mom in the middle. Did everything, okay. Yeah. Whew. Okay, so you were so saying I know something what about men are talking about when they say, "Oh, you step dad, you don't get a lot of it." I mean, you know, her life is okay. Yeah, and I, I feel like that um, men are often not given the credit they deserve for doing it because it's a thankless job. But sometimes, oh no, he's getting all the credit. I... I should touch me. <laughs> he's the king. <laughs> gotcha. I, okay. Well, that's good. As long as he's appreciated for it, yeah. because it's a big step, and I do want women to understand the magnitude of what they're no kids. of what they're asking. That's a big deal. You got to appreciate the hell out of that man because yeah. it's tough to be a father. You know, it's 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 tough. Mm-hmm. It's tough because you're thinking about all right the risk because now you can at any point if you say look now nah, you you don't. You don't get to engage with them anymore. It's nothing you can do about it, right? Because they're not biologically his. And if they didn't adopt, then right. nothing you can do. So there's a risk of you bonding with the person. And then now, just like how you said, she don't talk to you to this day. Mm-hmm. But that's the parent has to make that happen. So the yeah. parent didn't appreciate it. But the mom, she was like, that sure. Like, you did that, Ruth. You know, yeah. she appreciated it. She was the only one in the entire family that appreciated what I did. So I, that's okay. Got it. Okay. Okay, so that's fair. But those are those Not are some. I was married to, but... Those are <laughs> <laughs> those are some of the current concerns that men would have, right? So it's tough. But I definitely understand it now. Just um, talking to more people who have been through similar experiences and just understand that. Like, okay, there are some perks though. Like sometimes she does their hair. Like I'm like, thank you, and it looked good too, girl. And <laughs> I was the one that got her like interested in hair. So I used to do hair, so you know, and she got real good. And so now she does their hair sometimes okay yeah so that's good that's and yeah it ain't all bad it ain't all bad yeah. because uh, depending on how the children are raised mm-hmm. sometimes it could be really a good thing to add to your life right. so and then there's also circumstances where maybe they didn't have children or couldn't have children so right. it could be beneficial to them and so. then you practice on somebody else's kid so that was a benefit too like so i'm like oh, okay i did that let me every child when you get the first child you're super strict you're super hard and then you kind of yeah 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 chill out by the time no understood yeah 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 by the time you um you start the third day they get in colic and all that you're like eh whatever you raised them Guyanese the first time and he's like you know what by the end you're American <laughs> <laughs> no nah, that's real though that yeah. is real so I do want to ask this in your opinion 
what do you think that men could do? What, what do you think the three biggest improvements that they can do to be more successful in relationships? Um, they do have to focus on their career um, a lot more. Um, maybe, I don't know if it's because they are still dating or whatever that they can't focus. Because I remember when I was coming up in real estate, I noticed my years would go, my numbers would go down if I was in a relationship. Because I was being oh. stressed. Yeah. Like, or I was super in love or I was like stressed out, but it would just be affected. Either way, it would impact yes. you negatively. Yeah. Because I'm giving that person time, stopping what I'm doing in a day, instead of phone calls, I'm on the phone with you, stuff like that. So, um, and, and, or worrying about what they're doing instead of fo focusing on myself. So the men, they got to focus on themselves and like get the education that you need, get the kind of job that you need. And then once you get to that level, don't think you're God, like you still have to humble yourself. And like, cause a lot of these guys too, like they'll get good. A lot of black men got a lot of good jobs. Okay. <laughs> For good jobs, black men was winning when it came to really <laughs> Right. And a lot of times I was telling the woman, like, um, she's like, I want to leave her roof. Like, Not until you get this house, honey, because he, you need his job. Okay. Oh man. I mean? That you is like, uh, y'all together, together. <laughs> together. Okay. So, you know, and, and she, cause sometimes they don't understand yeah. and they don't see the value. And I was like, oh, the value comes in when you want to buy that house and you need that two, those two incomes. So men can, um, you know, definitely like try to be more understanding of women and knowing that the perfect woman is not coming your way. She's not coming just for the, just the women, men, the perfect man is not coming. And cause you know, it's a lot of guys that's played with, they were, they got the women, but they're still waiting for that perfect woman. Got it. You're still 67, waiting for the perfect woman. There's no perfect woman. Everybody's going to have their flaws. You have your flaws. She has her flaws. So stop expecting perfection, you know, and communicate. Because I feel like a lot of the things that y'all want, y'all don't want to tell them, look, you're going to get this mandatory testing or you're going to, you know, give me this prenup. Communicate that. But a lot of times men don't communicate or they don't put their foot down. And then the women get to, they, or they make the woman think that she's running the show until it's over, you know? A lot of these women that you said, the uh, the divorce thing, to go back to that, um, a lot of the men been broke up with her, you know what I mean? And okay. she's just the one pulling the trigger. She he already got his baby on the side or whatever he's doing. There are men out there like that. I know y'all think that all the men are good, but we, no way. I would, we're dealing with the no, ones that are trouble. I, I dwell in the realm of reality, so I would never say anything is absolute, right? Mm -hmm. um, I do think there is a disproportionate amount of women who end relationships prematurely just because They're it's emotional. <laughs> well and the fact that it's very easy to do right yeah. you have the, like you said you spoke about the no-fault divorce and they're going to be rewarded handsomely for it right if i can get a, a um freak a signing you don't get a signing bonus but you get a departure bonus think about that i don't know about that i can get that so you should have or you could have <laughs> well in most cases that's how it go down right it's, and women are more strategic about who they stack themselves they, up with they right don't now think long term enough who does you know, women um because it Pro it was very hard for me to walk away from my relationship even though i know it's bad i had to literally say out my mouth like this is what's happening i was like oh that sounds crazy why would i stay so so it took me like a year and a half two years three years four like a lot of years for me to just leave i think that you were you were led by love mostly um, I don't think that's common amongst many modern women. Yeah. They don't, they have the, like, even now, right? Your second situation mm -hmm. that you're going into, you found somebody who you ended up loving. Mm -hmm. However, you had a whole strategy first, mm -hmm. right? You did all these other things first. And you even, including strategic placement, where you said, hey, I'm going to mm -hmm. be in spots. Right looking a certain way to be able to entice this and man. I kept you were methodical. I, it wasn't a trick. I keep I keep my looks up. I try to keep dressing nice. It wasn't like I got on the first day and then it's like, oh yeah, now he see me in. Yeah. yeah, but you were extremely intentional right. about what it was. It wasn't, you weren't just led by love, right? right. You, en you ended up loving this person, but yeah. that was not what led you into this relationship. So with that, I think it's different. So even now, you getting married, you're going to be very careful about it. Everything is going to be to your liking, right? Not a perfect person, but 
they're going to at least be able to be financially what's acceptable to you. Mm-hmm. They have to look a certain way, um, and not to say you you have ridiculous standards because you got it. So, but you were you had a standard, and you weren't just led by love, and and you have way more I, standards. I, I, I had no standard. I you out, have had you had. I standards. took out looks. I took out money. You took out looks. Okay. I took out looks. I still got from, looks from one to ten. With, okay. Okay. <laughs> I still got looks better than I wanted. <laughs> okay. Okay. I took so, out. Do you so happen to get lucky and yeah, get looks? I took it out wasn't because he was looking for looks. No. Is he short? I took out height. And Is he he's short? <laughs> he's tall. Okay. Do so you so happen to get lucky and he was tall too? Right. Is he broke? I don't say he broke. He works. Is he getting to the money? He's working on it. Okay. We're, bu- we're building together. So got you. No, and I'm not saying, listen. But my point uh, is, I told God, like, because I'm, in my mind, I'm like, well, why would I tell God what to give me? He knows better for me. Right. So whatever he gives me, I'm going to be OK with it. Is he perfect? No. But I didn't even really know what he looked like. This is another little story. I play like love is blind because remember, at this time we were wearing masks. So oh. I only had him pull his mask down to make sure he wasn't just butt ugly. But um, it happened to me one time. I, the guy had a mask on and I thought I was like, OK, we're going on the thing. And he pulled that thing off. I wanted to pull out of my car and just spin oh, around and go like abort mission right right <laughs> but whatever i saw i was still mad at men so i was just i was like you know i forget it and i got to know him on the phone and conversations for a couple of weeks and then i forgot what he looked like so i was like oh, we gonna play love is blind and then when i saw him in person i was like oh okay. <laughs> I was like staring. I was like, Why? guys stare at me sometimes i'm like oh this is what they be doing this okay i was stuck on stupid when i saw him so i was like oh yeah it's great well okay so you got you got Pretty much what you wanted. So, all right, you win because you didn't. I didn't demand it, but God gave it to me anyway. Okay, okay, and that's and that's cool. But you were very intentional about it. You're very strategic about it. And what I'll say about that is this: the one thing that's weird about that is that I'm sure you would agree that no matter what, this time you had a higher standard than you did in your twenties or whatever yeah. you first time, right? Right. It was more on character, and yes. Yes, but there was more of a demand. There was more required. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I would imagine you would not get with the uh, same type of guy who may have had those things that you may have considered to be deficiencies, right? They would have to be an improvement on a lot of those things. So whatever. Some areas there are, I'm getting less in some areas, but it's not anything that can't be, like I look at what can be changed. If that can be changed, then we can work on that. Got it. So, so basically, all right, how about this? You ain't getting out of this one. You, <laughs> they would be objectively better than what you dealt with before. I, my thing is treatment. So if you treat me better, that already puts you in a way higher stratosphere than anything else. So it wasn't about money. No, we're not going for right. money. No, no, no. And I'm not even... None I, of those things. I wouldn't even suggest that. Character but, and treatment was really what I was going after. Okay. So the reason why I say that is because... Um, and treatment is a thing too because it, that takes a lot of effort. That means the expectations of what you do no, is not even, is higher. It, right? It's not like oh, so all these things. It just gradually build up to that because you know when women, when men are used to women, they're not gonna just show up with flowers the first day. They they're not gonna do all that stuff. That's doing too much. Sometimes that's doing too much. You think? In the so if a guy brought you flowers in the beginning, the would you be day, turned off? I wouldn't be turned off. I would think that's nice, but I would think he's a nice guy. And I was like, would you okay. would you think he was love bombing? Because a lot yeah. of women, um, a lot of women behave like, oh, he's love bombing because he brought you flowers because he tried to be considerate. I don't try to turn a um, positive into a negative when it comes to that. Okay, yeah, but you, you do realize a lot of women do, right? Yeah, they do. And they you're do. gonna be apprehensive. I think you would be apprehensive because you'd be like, what is because he trying to do? What's his motive? I didn't want to date a fanboy because what was happening when I did the relationship show, the, a lot of guys was like starting like, oh my god, I'm in love with you, and you're. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I started going on some dates with these people, and they were just like, one minute they would just love by me, and the next minute they like, F you, me. And I'm like, Whoa, Whoa. yes, <laughs> yeah, so that's I was a bit just extreme. like, I don't, I don't want to fall in love with somebody that thinks I'm perfect. And then as soon as I, my human comes out, then they start, you know, flipping out on me, you know, or yeah, a lot of people who are not in this world don't, um, understand that, right? They just think that you are exactly what you represent, right when you're on screen and it doesn't turn off. So I'm just going to tell you that 
the people that you see on screen, I'm me myself, I'm as authentic as I can be, mm -hmm. but my mannerisms and demeanor are not exactly the same if you see me in real life. Right. We have to maintain a certain persona to keep people interested on in us mm -hmm. on screen. You won't be interested if I acted exactly how I act in real life. Right. We have to be more animated. We right. have to talk with our hands. We have to be you know, present yourself perfect. I do cuts with my edits, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. you might hear me stutter a bit in real life, mm -hmm. but that's just life. We're humans. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just don't get that. Mm -hmm. They expect you to be exactly what they see you on screen and they go nuts when you're not. So I go on a date early on with him and somebody from the show that was watching me popped up. Is that you, Ruth? Is that you? Oh, oh you gotta pay. <laughs> He's like, you you with the right one, you with the right one. Slid in my DMs like, hey, you know, I'm like, how oh. you wanna just go behind the back? You saw me on a date. That's why I said like, I don't yeah, a lot of people none can't... of that no uh, like, Yeah, people be off it, man. It's crazy. But man. I think I think you think you were raising me up in front of a man though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been worse. I think it would have think it would have came out worse. You when you when you try like that, you don't know what mm -hmm. you're going into. But that's that's dangerous i've had some some people do run into you in the street too and they're like yo you know i'm the that's only thing that's favorite. weird about it is because people um they got the drop on me right i'm mm -hmm. already conspicuous as i'm like right. six four right. you're gonna see me and then you're like oh that's you know right. it happens and it's just like damn right and some people don't like you not that i'm not really right. worried about it i stay with the thing yeah. you, well, i mean you know it is, and i'm on swivel but right. a lot of times some people we're able to get to me. I'm like, oh, what the heck? Right. I don't know. Cause I just, I'm still not in that mode. I, you know what I mean? I'm just, I, I live my life regularly. I'm kind of am used to it now. It's not like we're talking about, oh, I'm just a big celebrity, but I'm a realtor. So yeah, people will know me from the video. Like they will come to my office and been following me for months and years. And then this is my first time meeting them at my office. So I had no idea or we'll be at a party together. I, I thought I saw you at the baby shower. I saw you somewhere right there. But they know me better than I know them. And that's the part where we feel like, okay, who, who is this? Like, you know what I mean? So it's just, that's when you feel a little insecure. Like, I hope you're not. Because some people are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> some people are yeah, really yeah. crazy. So now I'm going to ask you, what are three things that you think women can do better to sustain relationships? Did I finish the third one on the men? Um, I don't have No. That. Yeah, what's the thing? Um, stop being so judgmental. I think the judgmental part really made, made him stand out where it's like, he's not so judgmental as far as I can tell him things. It makes it more safe for us. Um, so you have things in your past or in your today that you're, you're not proud of, or you're working on. But when you do that to a woman, it's just like, don't you like get with women and like y'all try to improve them so like why does it matter like wherever she is right now and you know that she listens to you enough where you can get her to where you want her to be you know what i mean a lot of uh people just miss out on relationships because of that they're just really judgmental yeah yeah and um what i what i usually tell men is that just just learn a good poker face even if you are judgmental keep it to yourself like because i hear some things that are shockers right some people tell me some things and i'm like ooh. Damn, mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but i present myself as not being judgmental right so you will never know that i'm judging and i can tell you a story worse than what you did but i'm just going to get everything that i need to know right away to that's, disqualify that's you i'm trying to tell the women like they're they're listening to everything we say online <laughs> don't say anything you know what i mean and if y'all feel like it's in your nature to judge us like one to ten how many times y'all say that about every single woman every woman has to be rated this is just your job to rate us. Like, are you kidding me? And we really start talking like, you know. I'm putting, certainly guilty of that. I, like, but it's so fun. Like, we really? say ugly, ugly, No, ugly, and you know ugly. what? It's not even. You wouldn't like that. I'm just going to tell you. It's not even so much rating the woman per se. It's about, um, I guess, coming up with a consensus of something to see where you stand, what your where your taste comes. Because I normally would say things just to see what other people's reaction is. Is it similar to mine? Am I off base? Mm -hmm. it's, it's more of a comparison between the people, not so much the person that's being rated, right? So even like I was doing a, a pop the balloon or fine love review yesterday, mm -hmm. and I always rate the women, mm -hmm. right? And I, I tell people to put their mm -hmm. um, comments down below if they mm -hmm. agree or not, just to see where mm -hmm. we stand. So a lot of times when men do that, it's because men are competing with each other on a low. And it's not some even... of them swear that they're nine and ten. Like this is where I'm like, 
why is it so important to you that she not a non she not a ten like to you like you gotta remember your opinion is yours and i can tell you why i think something totally i can different. tell you why because mm -hmm. if every woman thinks they're a nine or a ten how can you how can you improve how do you improve from a ten you, you're, that's per, ten is perfection but that's looks there's a lot of things she can improve on if it's, we're talking about different departments What's her behavior? Oh, well, I thought you meant like okay. When these so they, when these women are rating themselves, they're only referring to looks. Are they they rate themselves? That's why times, they become yeah. tens because they're like I got so yeah. much other stuff going on yeah. that I become yeah. a ten. But so, 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 sometimes that works with the man. Like he like Psh, she heard to me. So here's the problem with women that think they're a ten. If a woman thinks she's a ten, women are hypergamous. What do you get with? But what if she's a nine? Like, I don't want to stay on the extreme. What okay. if she's a nine, right? She she just tries to always look her a certain way, but this is the way God made her. She's a nine. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, like, why do you even care? Like, if you look good enough to get attention and people respect you, that's enough. If you're a seven, it's okay. If you're a six, it's okay. Yeah. You don't have to be the good, best looking woman. But why, men just okay with, like, I'm not a, they're not tens. And they're fine, you know what I mean? But to us, we, we feel insecure if we don't hit that. Yeah, no, nah, men, men will tell you. They'll be like, hey, look, I might be like a, you know, seven or something. Yeah, right. Like, that's that's right. just what it is. You're not going to mm -hmm. say you a 10. Like, that I, That to me is weird. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, yeah, I don't. You need to stop putting so much emphasis on what y'all think about us a little bit. It, well, it's, <laughs> the reason why I say it's important is because it, it kind of messes up the curve. Because I'm going to get back to that part where I say women are hypergamous. Mm -hmm. If this woman who's a six think she's a 10 she's gonna really destroy the dating pool because now she's only gonna date the 10 guys those 10 date guys the, those those guys that are 10s that are dating her mm -hmm. they're getting a bunch mm -hmm. of the women so they are destroying the dating pool mm -hmm. and all of those women that they date are gonna be jaded because they're gonna do a hit and run smash mm -hmm. and pass mm -hmm. right and so all those women are now back in the dating pool they've dated that 10 they're looking at you as a seven, as a nobody. What? I could get tens. The hell with you. I don't want no man like you. And that's what happens. It, it really gives them an overinflated sense of ego to where it's like, I'm not even messing with you dudes down here right now. I just had, I got tens in my DMs. No, seriously. I'm a 10 because I got tens in my DMs. Because dudes will go, dudes will naturally date down, right? Mm -hmm. We're hypogamous. So and we would absolutely date down or smash down at least. A six, look, if you're a six, you're not a ten, right? You're just so far away from me. But I feel like if you're in like a range, a certain range will be like if you're an eight, consider yourself way better looking than everybody else. That's all that matters. But don't try to be a think you're a six and you're, I mean, think you're a six and you're thinking you're a ten. Like I don't, I would definitely talk. Yeah, I, maybe no, you're not. <laughs> well, you realize that's a thing, no, right? That's a is. thing, and that and that's we'll why. But now you kind of understand why I say that could be problematic for the dating market and how it will kind of destroy the yeah, pool because yeah, no, it'll it'll make it that's what contributes to the lopsidedness the men would just be like no baby you are six I, today i'm here to tell yeah, but you no. I, I yeah but you'll see that on a podcast <laughs> but you don't see that in the dms because i've watched right. average girls dms and right. if you've been on them dating apps you get a hell of hits from all types of guys mm -hmm. all ranges yeah. of guys if i put no matter what i could have three times the status as you i could mm -hmm. even look better than you mm -hmm. i can never compete with you yeah. for like celebrities don't really compete with the average woman as far as like getting hits for mm -hmm. dates and stuff mm -hmm. i'm sure you had more than you could even really mess with mm -hmm. right and what do you even have to go by you you're not going to read all of those there's no way so you're going to eliminate dudes who probably would have been the best for you and take most of the That's best why. looking ones and that happens in most cases it'll take most of the well, so what were you doing when you're getting all those hits how do you sift through them because sometimes it might be a hundred. I I was like I said I was going for character, so I was. How do you taking get for note? Character? I was well, you know, I was doing the show at the same time, so I was going to report back. I was taking notes on people and um, asking them questions, having conversations with them. Um, I did fall for a couple. That's that's when I like naturally I would fall for the one that I thought well, he had a nice call, he had a nice suit, or you know whatever like that. And I was like, this is not working. That's why yeah. I was like, the abs. And, like, yeah, and, and a lot of women never fall out of that. It's, 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 it was giving me access to men that was not interested in relationships, but they had yeah, on paper. They had, they had, yes. Yeah. And why would they be interested in relationships if every woman wants them? But I, I could shut them down real quick. I was like, well, I'm still a bit. He's like, what do you mean? You won't give me some girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, they was coming I like just, that? They was cussing me out. What? Like, they said, you going to give me some? Like, like, I'm not going to be dating you and you ain't giving me none. Like, you're not, not to say like that, but yeah. Yeah, that's probably how yeah. it sounded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's aggressive. I can't see how that's awkward too because I think it should be something or, organic. But you made it your business to tell them that you were Sullivan, right? Some, Did you? Yeah, some of them. Well, how long would you take before you would tell somebody you're Sullivan? No, I was telling them on the ad. <laughs> well, you were telling them before they even had any engagement. Yeah, they were upset. They were that's like, fair. It's not fair that you would just keep yourself to yourself. Are you a virgin? This and that. I'm like, you're gonna say whatever you're so, gonna say. You're so, you, no in fairness, you told them before they invested any yeah, real yeah. time or any yeah. money at all. Yeah. So they can't really get mad at you. No. Like if you th if we three dates in mm -hmm. and then I'm up here trying to press you and then right. now you try to drop the bomb on me that you're right. sold it now. Yeah. I'm like, uh huh. I was I wasn't even going on dates with them because I realized I was on to them. I'm like, wait, why are you gonna take me to a fancy restaurant? You don't even know me, sir. So I was like, oh, you want to be They want to be seen with you. Okay. I'm like, nope. I'm a screen for dates now, you know. And so I didn't go out on dates in public with everybody. Yeah, and it was just yeah. very few dates. I yeah, there's a lot of. Um play pirates that would uh because disagree if you're looking with you for love why are you play pirate like you can't feed yourself like some can't or some won't because they feel like it's so much easier so free, let this... me get free food that's not that's not a black person's son no there's some this... no there's a lot of uh other people than us that are getting it in with that oh, i can yeah, promise no. you yeah for I can promise you there's a whole bunch like of free stuff too. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some. <laughs> you just got to go to the TikTok side of things. It's extremely toxic over mm -hmm. there. They are the ones who really, really like you'll see that okay. they'll have like the methods and the strategies on mm -hmm. how to have someone live in how, how to live in their mind rent free like strategies mm -hmm. and telling you what to do, how to um, how to make a pay pig What's like a pay, pig? a pay pig. All right. So, you know about a sugar daddy, mm -hmm. sugar daddy minus the sugar. You just oh. literally pay. These oh. women, and sometimes it, it leads into like financial dominatrix and That's all that type of stuff. But yeah, they don't, they get nothing, no nothing, no contact, likely never even meet. No, and, and, and we're and asking just men when you get there, when you get to your, I believe a man should find a wife before he makes it financially. It doesn't make it much easier to know who has your back. That's why I believe in building. Um, but um, when you get there, don't forget like to be kind to the people that are not on your level i just feel like when okay. men get their money they just no woman's good enough and it's a wrap you know well like, here's married. the problem they, they they've arrived money. they've yeah. arrived they've earned it they've so they've earned their their place in society right so it's like just imagine anything that you worked all the way to the max to get to to where the point where let's say you were the best realtor ever right like you're not doing small deals no more mm -hmm. you're going to do small deals or you doing big deals? Let's say you're doing seriously right. big deals. I, you're not going. Um, you you're not going to come back down, huh? <laughs> if it was my family, you know. Yeah, well, that's different. That but the average person couldn't right. come to you with no little deal. Right. Right. They want the big deal now. They've mm -hmm. they've earned their keep and they've worked. They've worked very hard to become that accomplished. It's a tough thing. They didn't ride with me. They wasn't shooting with me when I was in the gym. So it is what it is. Like I, I qualify for more now. More women want me right now. Why am I not going to demand? The absolute best. That's why I was like asking. I was like, okay, am I like I'm supposed to be certain places by now? Yeah, like, let me do the same thing. I was like, well, maybe I need to get the man first because well, like yeah. maybe if I get there, I'm gonna look it down at the one that you chose. But you me. know, women do it too. You yeah, know, the baddies. I never get the first time. The, the females who are baddies have different standards than your average woman, right? The ones who got the everything, especially mm -hmm. if it's natural, they like. All right. You go. You got to come correct. At least, at least in the West. Right. right you have to come correct like they demand more they like a lot of dudes understand automatically like i ain't even gonna try that one they already know like right. she just see about the right. shoot my plane right on down like right. i already know like she ain't she ain't trying to hear it i ain't i ain't, I ain't it for her so, so it's the same thing you have money and be humble at the same time it's almost like so impossible and that's why you don't have a person whether you're a man or a woman well no you could have a per see don't get it twisted a lot of people with money they do want love and stuff they just demand to be treated a certain way because what they're doing for you well think about it they're going to listen to what they're doing for your life is completely different if a man is a millionaire he is changing your life forever everything that you're going to do for the rest of your life is going to be better your vacation is going to be better your children's schools are going to be better the food you consume is going to be better your car is going to be better your makeup is going to be better you know everything that you got is better you know i laugh because that's the same treatment a poor man should have got in the first place <laughs> this is true so uh, you yeah. have to do all of that just to be treated well. That's crazy. Yeah, but you know what I what I'm saying is that I feel like every man should be treated that way, and I feel like every woman should be treated the way yeah. she wants to. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you just have to find someone who appreciates what it is that you are. Right. And what I'm saying is that, you know, depending on where you stand in the sexual marketplace, try to find someone who matches up close to you. I always tell dudes, 
to go a couple points lower than uh, what they would consider themselves because that woman's going to actually adore you enough to yeah. treat you the way you want to be treated as a man. And with that advice, they will find a wife because that's why everybody was made on a different level. The people that, you know, not getting all the girls or the guys, mm -hmm. they, they belong together. Like, but sometimes when they at the bottom, they be sh men be shooting for the, for the moon too. When yeah. it comes to looks. I mean, that, they're going to they're gonna shoot their shot, but oh. they accept it because sometimes they get lucky because women are emotional and I can catch you on rebound. Don't say you ain't see it happen. Don't say you don't see it happen. Like you see a banging looking girl with right. a dude that probably don't belong there right. from from what you think, yeah. but he shot his shot. And some yeah. people play the numbers game. But yeah. if, they, if they try to take down a hundred numbers in a day, they're going to get, even if they trash, they're going to get like two. If you got two baddies numbers in a day, hey. Right. <laughs> or no for real right. and then you talk to one let's say she coming out of a bad breakup mm -hmm. and you were just the antithesis of what she was dealing with mm -hmm. think about that so let's say this dude was abusive but then you're just mad supportive mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying let's say this dude couldn't dress but then now you 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 that right mm -hmm. like if you can go ahead and be exactly what that woman just broke up out of mm -hmm. then and, and that timing is right you might end up with that female if you treat her well and she learns to love you, which is possible. Right. If you catch her in a vulnerable moment, which is kind of predatory, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> if if you know that's what you're doing, but maybe the timing was just right. Maybe you just were going to treat her that way, right? Maybe you just were going to behave that way without knowing that she's coming out of a breakup. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that timing's just right, and, and you can you score uh, um, a female that you otherwise would not have. And then you won't marry her because she's boy because you're boycotting marriage. Um, <laughs> After <marriage>. <laughs> <laughs> that could be <laughs> you might, you might, you might, you might. Oh, now you can marry her because no, and this is what I'm saying. Like, listen, are waiting you're for not the perfect girl. To we're not waiting for the perfect, we're, we're not, we're not waiting for the perfect girl. We're waiting for the girl to treat us perfectly. So, we don't want to be talked down to ever. We want mm -hmm. women to respect us as a man. We want women who's an actual, a natural nurturer. Mm -hmm. We want a woman who is considerate. Mm -hmm. So if you have those three qualities and you still happen to look good too, we, um, dude, it's, dudes are pretty flexible with the looks. But in all honesty, it's like <laughs> that part. Uh, <laughs> that part being considerate was is, goes the furthest to me because if a person is considerate, they're thinking of what it is that you like right. in every aspect. They're looking to see how they can make your life better or your life easier. Going back to your other question, you said the three things that women can do. Men can do or what women can do? Um, you did the men. Oh, okay. uh, we're going to go with the women. What's the question again? So three things that a woman can do better to sustain relationships. Okay. Um, I, like you said, well, you said a lot of those things. If, you, if you're considerate, if you respect your man, right, you respect him and you respect what he brings, like he's a human being. He's not like you're going to go on a journey with him. So well, whoever he is today, he will be better later. You know, hopefully he's not going in the on the negative side. He's going, he's building up to the positive. So I think that if you respect who he is and give him love and treat him well, like if you want good treatment, like all you have to do really is treat the other person the way you want to be treated, right? So if you want good treatment, give him good treatment. You don't need to wait for him to do something that you saw on the internet. will not you do it? will not you go on that picnic? Why don't you have this romantic thing and say, hey, these are the kind of things that I like. Men are open. They, if you find an open man, you know, everything I say, I qualify because I'm like, I know a lot of them. They can do that. But no, let's not forget about them. But once I realized, I had to say, you know what? In general, men are good men. Like, men are good. Yeah, men. I think if so, too. If you don't believe that, you're going to have a hard time in relationships. But before, I thought I ran into marriage because I was like, all men are cheaters. All men are liars. And you know, if you find somebody that won't cheat on you, then that's that's then that's a win. That was my standard before. And I was, you know, I was off, you know, because I didn't have the right beliefs and the mindset. So you have to really believe that why would God give you trash? Like he's gonna give you somebody that is gonna be great for you. It might not be in the package wrapped the way you thought it was gonna be. And a lot of these women, they went on this journey with these men and they got a whole bunch of money now. But if you don't you're not willing and knowing that you're not a finished product. Like that's another thing you got to do is be humble. You have to be humble in a relationship. You have to know um, when to back off. Like the other day we had uh, all this stuff in our cart 
and he's pushing in, I'm pushing in. We had to get somebody to help us. And at some point he was like, all right, I'm good. And then the guy was like, I'm, I'm like, yo, we got somebody to come help you lift these waters. And he's like, no, I got it. And I'm like, you know what, sir, you got to go. Because <laughs> he said he got it. He got it. You know, I have to learn when to back off and not yeah. say, like, if it was me, I would do X, Y, and Z. You can't tell him how to be a man. You know what I mean? If he feel like he got it, then let, let him, him get it. Yeah, and that's it. So, like, just being there for him, giving him food. And, you know, they love that. They love stuff like they love home cooked meals. They love being treated special. Like if you treat your man like he's special and that he's the one and you respect yourself, I don't see how you can go wrong, honestly. Damn. Ah, that's good. Those are all good things. Now, we're actually getting to the end of this. Believe it or not, we were here for sitting down for a good uh, two hours of some change. Really? Yeah, it didn't feel like it, right? But yeah, we, we, was, we was getting it in. Okay. So I do want you to allow people to get all your socials. Where can mm -hmm. they find you? Anything that you may have coming up? Mm -hmm. Let us know where we could get you. Uh, you can find me at um, Instagram is at Ruth Marquise Group. So that's Ruth R U T H M A R Q U I S Group. Um, also, I'm on um, Ruth and Relationships on Instagram. I'm starting that back up. I'm gonna get back into the relationship. Um, my clips and everything. I have a lot of episodes I need to clip up and put out there. So if you want to see this stuff on relationships, that's what it is. So you that's YouTube. That's Instagram. Find them both of them. Nice. And what if they want to grab a um a property? Crib from me, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was doing here. Um, um so yeah, definitely reach out on Ruth Marquis Group. That's real if you see anything that says Ruth Marquis Group is real estate. And um anything that says with Ruth relationships is um, relationships. Awesome. Listen, we had a good talk here. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you find value in this, please Go ahead, drop that like if you haven't. If you made it this far in the video, you better give me a like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and share this to someone else who you think may also find value in it. We appreciate you, Ruth. Been a real one. Thank you so much for joining in. And as always, stay hungry, my friends. Never thirsty.